Glad you guys are here. Yep. You know what? We got company coming in today. And we got the people poll question to get to. Um, and we got celebrities to talk about. Nick and Jessica finally, ugh, dead, two in the head. That marriage is over. We can talk about it if you care. Uh, we'll talk about little Kim. We'll talk about Mariah Carey. We'll talk about Prince. And we'll talk about Ryan Seacrest among just a few of the celebrities that we're going to chat about today. Plus, during Advice Hour, I've got some suggestions for how to survive the holidays. Because I don't know about you, but with me, there's a problem going on. So I dug up these survival tips. I plan on heeding to them myself. <laughs> um, oh, oh, the guest, the one and only Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I know. He's coming in the show today. That'll be a lot of fun. That's during the Hour of Truth. So it is what it is. Keep it where you got it. Your participation is always warranted and, and needed at 866-GET-WENDY. Um, the fax machine is 866-WENDY-FAX. I'm Wendy Williams, and welcome to this mess. It's called the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen. It is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Uh, uh, yeah, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the show, yo! Woo! Ah, do we have a problem? Yeah. We don't got no problem. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience Radio Program, everybody. Is it too late to say Happy Thanksgiving again? Okay. Everybody okay? Everybody safe? Did everybody survive the weekend? Hmm. So the next stop, Christmas? Or Ramadan? Or Festivis? Oh, Hanukkah? <laughs> what? Do I get arrested for saying Christmas? You know you get arrested for stuff like that. If you're a teacher in a school and you dare put up a Christmas tree in the classroom, what? The cops will take you away and call diapers on your kids. How dare you celebrate a Christmas? <laughs> Woo! 
I got to tell you something. I'm running into you all's arms today. I am. If four days off is just, you know, too much. And the food. Forget it. I'm on water and air. And, oh, and dots. Until Christmas. You ate a lot this weekend, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. What? You can see it? I do see it. No! Oh. No! I'm not, I'm not lying. When I first saw you this morning, I'm like, she had a good time. No! This weekend. It's, it's all in the cheese. No, my face is the third stop for the fat. I was just explaining it to my husband last night. I said, first stop is the in between the leg, the upper thigh leg rub. That's the first place the fat goes. Then the next place it goes is right here on my bra. You don't see it until the third stop on my face. Yeah, it's third. What? You're third base, Ma. Crap. I'm sorry. What did I say? Water and dots? Cut out the water. <laughs> oh. I can't live without the dots. Get no, that. but could it be the... She's been arrested. No, 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 no. He said it right. No, that's ham, hocks, and cheese. Ham, ham. <laughs> and the pork chop and biscuit oh, sandwich I had last night, 2 o'clock in the morning, while I watched about my 55th episode of Good Times. Oh, my God. How many episodes did you see? Ooh. In the two-parter where Penny, um, Penny, Penny's mom, Tootie, uh, Tootie's mom was beating her, yes. that came on, like, last night, like, 7 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, with yeah. The, exactly. Yes. Beat her with the irons. Mm -hmm. Desperate Housewives was good last night. I had a good weekend. She Shout out to Remy Martin. We did the damn thing. Um, I forgot what day of the week it was. That was Thursday. That was Thursday. Wednesday? 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 Yes. Yup. Shout out to her. Shout out to everybody I saw out there in New Jersey. Special shout out to Carlin's Cut Up. Good old, we's always good to see you. Well, DJ Qua, what? Yes. Race? What? Question mark? As just a warm up to Don's and Divas, dog. Oh. <laughs> then we had the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. Which was uh, at the Laugh Factory. Um, it usually is Wednesday nights. We had it Thursday night this week. It was fabulous. Art, you blew in and out so fast, I don't even think you noticed. There's full-blown menus, dog. About 25 different things on the menus, from the chicken fingers to the, oh, my God, the wings. The, the, all, the kitchen is officially open. Wow. That's so if you're coming to see the what spilled on my bag? Your water. I didn't have water, all right? Oh, somebody left a cup of water. Maybe Steve or somebody left some water. I don't know what Steve kisses. Oh! Hello? Oh, wow. oh, Just yeah. wipe it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's married and stuff, you know. He's, he's on the road. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mr. Hightower. Only, only, Mr. Hightower only say that because I know how I'd be if I was on the road. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like a man. <laughs> Uh, shout out to the Top Dogs of Comedy. Two stellar shows. Fabulous. Two shows on Friday night in New York City sold out at Symphony Space. A real nice space, I might add. And then Saturday night we went to Hartford. Oh my God. What? Oh. And we had the after party, too. Oh. Will Sivens, you are on top of your game, boy. Capone, what you no know good? That's our dog, Capone. Special shout out to Tony Roberts. Funny, funny, funny. And Rob Stapleton. What more can I say? Exactly. Those are my dogs, the top dogs of comedy. We took our little comedy show on the road. We had a good time this weekend. And I had my girls come over on Friday. And we drank. And we ate. And we laughed. We kikied. I had a lot of resting. Did you go shopping this weekend? Let's go to the telephone, see what people are saying. People apparently started out the weekend like Black Friday like was maddening in the stores. Then they say as the weekend went by, all the consumer purchasing slowed down. Today is what they call the e the um, online day. Art, are you shopping online today? Yeah. You're going to be in cyberspace with everybody. Hello? Hi, it's oh, it, uh, 866 Get Wendy. Hello? Not yet. Oh. Um, but today is the big um, on, online shopping day. Oh. Did you make your liver with the um, the bacon wrap? Yeah. Oh, that's so. Yeah, of course. So. Rounds and rounds. My cholesterol must be terrible today. You know, when you eat the organs, your hey, cholesterol when... goes. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? How was your Thanksgiving? Good, everything was great. Oh, good. Um, did you eat a lot? Yeah. Did you finally fry that um, turkey? No, and we didn't miss it. Oh, okay. We got the ham. I ordered it from the catalog. Oh, that's what I had. The ham too. was delicious. Um, and it was came all spiraled, done, all honeyed up. I just dumped another thing of honey over it. Oh. And some golden spicy brown. Oh. Mm. That sounds good. Exactly. But um, happy belated Thanksgiving. I love you. Thank you. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, what's up, Wendy? Hey. How's everything going? Well, everything's going well. How are you today? I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'm glad to miss you on the weekend, and I love the best stuff. I know. 
Well, you know, here in New York, you get a two-hour wind-up of what the whole week was about. It's a it's a new best of thing. It just ran this past weekend. I forgot to wake up and listen. Damn. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, but I'm, um, I'm glad. Ask a question. Okay. How come they don't be playing Rochelle Pharrell? I don't know. You know what? Ask Stacy. Stacy Anderson. She's the queen of all music. Stacy who? Well, his, it, the music director. Stacy. Stacy Anderson. Just fire uh, her off. Who are you talking to, her? No. Uh, Rochelle's boyfriend? No, this is this is James Crosland. Hi, James. Yeah, you remember I was at the um at the Fallen Soldiers, and I told you your panties were your butt. Oh, yeah, she, he did tell me that my panties were my butt. He saw me pick them out oh. <laughs> in the middle of Brownsville. <laughs> you were so wrong. You were so wrong. <laughs> I love you to death, but you know they be hating on you, though, right? I know, I know. I can't. What, what, what am I supposed to do? They be hating on you. I tell you, you were beautiful, though. You really beautiful. Thank though. you. Thank you, James. Yeah. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Yeah, Knott's Landing was deftifying. I mean, um, what did I say? Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. You know why? Because Desperate Housewives, with that whole Wisteria Lane, you know that's like how Knott's Landing was back in the day. And they're having the Knott's Landing reunion, everybody, on December 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. And I am so watching it. Okay, they're all going to be sitting around talking about their favorite moments from the show. But I love that show enough to sit around and watch with them. Lisa Hartman and Ted Shackelford, Donna Mills and whatnot. <laughs> Even Nicolette Sheridan's coming back through. And Halle Berry, remember she played the, the young lover to the black man? Alec Baldwin used to be on the show. Michelle Phillips, Michelle Lee, who's always looked like a monkey to me. Oh. And um, William Devane, who's always been the handsome older man. Hello? Hi. I heard you. Hello? Hello. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. That's December 2nd, everybody, uh, at 9 Eastern. Chasing Farrah tonight on um, Nickelodeon, though. The same thing that um, the Good Times Channel? What is that? TV Land. TV Land. Tonight... At 10 p.m. It's like a four-hour-a-thon of Chasing Farah. How are you? Hi, Wendy. Hi. God, I can't believe I have you. Well, I'm nice to have you here. Oh, great. Listen, Wendy, mm -hmm. I'm 64. Uh-huh. Listen to you every day. Love you. Oh. I'm from Philly. I love that. I have a jump off that's 51. Wow. And he is wow. all that. Wow. And what I want to ask you, Wendy, is okay. should I get him a Christmas present or not? Well, how long have you been married? I'm not married. Okay. Do you have a boyfriend, a regular boyfriend? No. Okay, so are you sneaking around? Because a jump off is like, you know, he, just for sex and you're not really trying to take him out of the house. Well, no, he's not married either, but, you know, it's the it's the age difference yeah, and yeah, yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How often do you all have sex, by the oh. way? Oh, my God, Wendy. Like, um, Ew. it all depends. <laughs> like, um, like we had sex Saturday and, like, we had sex longer. for, like, five straight hours. Wow. Oh. Is that because at 51 he doesn't work the same, or at 64 it takes you longer to get moist? No. You know what, Wendy? I start lubricating as soon as oh, I wow. get together. Wow. You know, you've got a very, very young swagger to your voice. I would have never guessed you were 64. Yes, I am. Wow. Can I ask you a little bit more about 64-year-old sex? I mean, from a woman's... Can we talk, you know, younger woman to older woman? Of course. Okay. Uh, do you still give professionals? Oh. Do I? What? Wow. And my girlfriend thinks it's ridiculous. No. She says, she says when she's 64, she's not even going to be having sex. See? But I give a great professional. You know what? I like do him, if you know what I mean. Yes, I understand. Now, I do him. Now, let me ask you this, because things change. The pH balance in your body, and, you know, there's a lot going on down there at 64. And I just, does he give you professionals? Oh, oh my God. Ew. <laughs> smells. I mean, like, screaming <laughs> professional. Wow. I mean, screaming. Now, what do you do down there? How do you quaff it? Do you take it all off, or is it most of it thinned out? Because I've seen down there on older women. I know. It thins it, out. It, it, well, I'll tell you, it's gray, but I just keep oh. it cut short. And you know what? Yes. He doesn't care. Yeah. Oh. 
Men don't care about stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me. I can't believe it. I mean, like, it's like, I'm like, uh, I can't explain it. I'm like in heaven. Then, of course, you get him a gift. Of course. Yes. Okay. How long have you been jumping off with him? With a cow whip. Well, I, I used to see him when he was 31. Wow. And then we, like, just remained friends for, like, the last 20 years. Yes. And then, we, for some reason, we just started up again. But yes. I don't know what happened to him. He is nothing like he was when he was 31. Well, he's a grown he man is, now. Wendy, I'm going to tell you, he's excellent. Excellent. I have never had sex like this before. Now, are you... Are you the only one he's having sex with, like, to the best of your knowledge? To the best of my knowledge. Would you be terribly disappointed if he was romancing a 30-year-old? Oh. No. Okay. okay. You know why? Because I'm getting what I want. Ooh. See, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm a, a retired professional woman. Yes, yes. And, you know, like, sex is important to me now, and I haven't had any for, like, two years. You know, any that I really like. Yes. And I'm, what I'm having now is, like, unbelievable sex. Man. Unbelievable. Have, have you ever tried the third input? Oh, stop. He's asking about that. But, Wendy, I'm not, I'm not... He's asking me about that. I mean, just from one woman to another, if you've gone this long without it, 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 it keep that to yourself. Yeah, don't bother with that. You know what, what? I mean. That, like... Yeah, I, I feel like I should hold back something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just don't give them everything. Yeah. He, we to he's talked about it, but I just told him, and I call it the back door, of course. Yes. And I told him, I said, well, I don't do the back door. And he, he asked me at least, uh, well, he has asked me at least about four times. Yes. I just keep telling him no. Uh, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of pain and interruption involved. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. I'm yeah, doing don't bother. Little, but I, the, the two inputs, I'm doing great. Good. With fabulous. And, and you know what? I'm not all stretched out of shape because I've <sighs> never had children and... Yeah. He's enjoying himself. Believe good. Me. Good for you. Yes, get him a gift. Yes, yes, get him a gift. Thank you, Wendy. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. I am looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professionals. I'm, I'm very interested in that. I'm very good at it. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Oh, yeah. And it's the Wendy Williams Experience at 27 minutes after 2 o'clock. Good afternoon, my friends. And thank you for being here today. You know, we are gearing up for our ultimate Christmas party with a purpose. December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis. It's on 45th Street and Broadway, right in Times Square, where those two um, cabs collided yesterday. Did you see that? Can you imagine being there? You got to be so careful out, out here. Even walking on the sidewalk, you just never know what's going to happen. Anyway, our party is uh, right there in at the Marriott in Times Square. The crossroads to the world is what they call Times Square. Uh, we simply call it Times Square. Huh, it's just around the corner. We, I think we take it for granted. When's the last time you walked in Times Square and looked up and saw all the pretty lights? Every time I, um, I never walk in Times Square, but I drive in it. And I always, the wonderment of it all, just, you know, all the lights and all the billboards and, you know, you got to look up real high for the cheaper ones. But even in Times Square, cheap is not cheap. You know, then you look down the street, you see Puffy with his number one up and his head down and you're like, damn, that's power. You know what I, you know what I mean? And you see all the people walking and robbing each other, stealing, you know, the pickpocketers. The freaks. The freaks. The naked cowboy. It's just, and we just take it, take it for granted. Every Wednesday night, we're in Times Square. All right, off to the left. But it's still not the Times Square uh, area code in the district, zip code. Laugh Factory. Now featuring an open kitchen and full chop chop. Mm. Anyway, back to the um, Christmas party with a purpose. So this is going to be really great. Black is the new black. I don't know what you're planning on wearing, but apparently this season you can't go wrong. No season can you go wrong if you wear black. Full holiday buffet, live entertainment. The men are going to be in slacks and, and you know, perhaps sports coats or full-blown suits. Goose, what are you wearing? One of those Hawaiian shirts you always wear? Long black, uh, long black jacket, hat. Yeah, so you're going to have on a, 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 a suit but with, with no tie. It's like a pimp. A, oh. Yeah. Oh. Be careful. Oh. <laughs> Goose will be there dressed like a pimp. 
I'll be there probably dressed in a dress. And Art, you'll be there in Michael Kors. No, I'm going to paint my whole body tar black and wear a diaper. This is the difference. This all be black. Anyway, you can get your tickets now at Ticketmaster by calling 212-307-7171. And we'll see you December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquet. It's the WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. The purpose this year is to benefit the New York Department of Health. Um, they're sponsoring, actually, and the benefit is for the domestic violence program, Safe Horizons, and Day One. So I'll see you there. Steve will be there. Champagne will all be there. It's the WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. We do it every year. This year is no different. December 17th. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster now. 866-GET-WENDY. It's 866-GET-WENDY. I'm going to the phone in just a moment. Um, but first, I want to shout out to my friend Stephanie Cohen and her lovely husband, Ben. They own Benjamin Rug and Home Imports in Secaucus, New Jersey. This place has nonstop furniture. What? Do you like contemporary stuff like me? All right. Well, that gallery is downstairs. Are you traditional? More like my mother? That gallery is downstairs, too. Or do you like the classic gallery? That's upstairs. My sister likes the classic stuff. Chairs with feet and stuff. You know. The detached bathtub sitting in the middle of the, you know, it's like a classic look. But they have furniture at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, and they also have a fabulous selection of rugs. And the thing that you need to remember is that this was originally a wholesale store. Now it's a retail store with wholesale prices. Yeah. That means that the savings are directly for you, my friends. And go to the website, Stephanie Cohen. And her husband, Ben, own it. You're going to go to Stephanie's website, stephaniecohen.com. Take a look at what they have. Snazzy leather, if you're into leather. If not, then, you know, you can look at the cloth. I tend to concentrate on what I like most, which is the contemporary stuff. I love contemporary furniture. Oh, the mirrored stuff. The, you know, nice stuff. Not put together with glue and scissors like you get when, you know, you go, go, go other places. Do you know what I mean? All right. Incredibly priced rugs and furniture. They're open Monday through Friday. I'll give you the um, website and then the store hours. 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. 20 Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus, New Jersey. That's where they are. The one and only Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. 10 minutes outside of New York City. Take the Lincoln Tunnel to Route 3. You see all the signs. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, located at 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Give them a call, 201-617-9000. Go to the website, stephaniecohen.com. Thank you, Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. I love you all, and I love how you've tricked out the office here. <clears throat> Mine, Steve's, our bosses. They tricked out a bunch of offices here. Let's go to the telephone. We're wild carding it. Let's see who's there. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited. How are you? Hey, win, win. <laughs> Yeah, you, you. <laughs> Tell me I got those tickets. We didn't give away any tickets. Oh, damn. You for the, said call. For the Dons. And, no, yeah. no, no, I, no, I said call to talk. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, though. Oh, I don't care about Benjamin. I care about the party. <laughs> hate to be rude. Well, um, keep listening. Do we have passes today, uh, yeah. Goose? We do? Mm -hmm. How many passes? One pair. We have Goose, one pair? Please. We have a pair of passes. We're going to give them away later on in the show. Okay. I mean, in the meantime, I can give you the telephone number and I can give you the web address. Nicole gave it to me already. Oh, gosh. Friend from Verizon. You're all in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said Nicole gave it to me already. Thank you so much for uh, calling and listening. No problem. And keep listening because we've got those Dons and Divas extravaganza passes coming up later on today. I got to tell you something. We're getting we're getting telephone calls from all down south. Like people are actually flying into town to plan to be here for December twenty second, the big Dons and Divas extravaganza with five hours of open bar, Mary J. Blige, you know, and all the poontang you could I mean I mean, you know. I mean let's be real about what this party is. Pimps up host. <laughs> no, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, is this the Wendy Williams experience? Yep, how are you? Oh, my goodness, I can't I'm talking to you. I'm good. Um, I needed some advice. Okay. Okay, um, I've been with my husband for seven years, okay? Mm -hmm. And I have three kids with him. Well, we ended up, like, fighting over Thanksgiving weekend. Mm -hmm. And then, all of a sudden, on Saturday, he decides he's going to tell me that he wants a divorce. 
So we wow. ended up getting all into the whole thing. Okay. And we finally sat down and we decided we were going to be friends. Okay. Well, um, now he, like, wants to live with me because he's afraid to pay, like, child support. No. And he wants to live with me, Wendy. And he wants to stay in my back bedroom that I have open. And he wants to live here. And, like... You know how you get to that point where you're upset and you cry and cry and cry and cry and cry? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But now I'm to the point where I'm, like, numb. I, I don't care what happens. I just... And well, then it's like, I did the, I, I made the mistake of doing the whole thing where I cry and cry and cry and let mm-hmm. him know that I feel bad. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's just, it's bugging the heck out of me. And I'm just is, like, what is, should I do? Well, let me ask you, is this divorce going to make your life better? Because there's nothing wrong with saying yes. I don't know. See, the thing of it is, is I'm still in love, and I love him, and he, I don't know, it was like, because I was a stay-at-home mom for the longest time. Okay. And, and so you're going to need your child support. I know, I know. And and he's scared of paying it, but you will not. If you're going to divorce, you got to divorce, and you got to make this clean, because I'm going to tell you something. Him living in the back bedroom will only benefit him and not you. The way it'll benefit him is, is that he'll be right there to offer assistance as opposed to actual money for child support. Mm-hmm. He'll be right there to have sex with you, as well as being out at other girls' house having sex with them. And the first time the doorbell rings and it's a man trying to date you, he's not having it. Well, that's the whole thing. He's like... like, And part of divorce is making somebody suffer. Like, you know what? We can't get along together. You know, you're going to miss it. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe you guys can date once you separate, you know, leading up to the divorce or something. But now... Okay. Well, this is what he says. As of now, he's like, okay, well, let's separate. And then after we separate, we'll then eventually go to a divorce and he'll pay for the divorce. But then I'm like, dude, why are you living in my back bedroom? Uh, you know, Mm-mm. You want to, you know what I mean? If you don't want to be with me, why be in my house where you're going to see me every day? Because he's not going to see you every day. He's going to be able to have other independent women like you. Apparently, this house you've been living in is your house. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, if you sell it, you realize it's still community property. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know how, you know, women, we're doing it for ourselves these days. Mm-hmm. And many of us, the girls that he'll be cheating with will be girls with their own apartments. So you won't see him every day. Mm-hmm. And it won't even be called cheating because, you know, now you're giving it the, the thumbs up. Um, I, I would get him out of that back bedroom. Okay. It's either all or nothing. Okay. I mean, are we married or are we not? And if we're going to separate, then you get the hell out. Now we're gonna, now you're going to get to the root of who the hell you married. Yeah. Because it almost seems like he's playing games. And, and Wendy, I don't want to do it anymore. I, I got three kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're what comes first. How old him. are they? Not him. How old are the kids? Um, I have a six-year-old. He has, he's a handicap. He has autism. Mm-hmm. And I have a four-year-old daughter and a three-year-old daughter. Yeah. And, like, the kids are taking it hard. Like, my daughter asked today because he's been sleeping downstairs. This is, he's, a, he's an ass. He he's doing this ass. right before Christmas. He's a straight up. I just, you know what? You Everybody's need to, saying that. You know what? You need to get a divorce lawyer and start seeing your divorce lawyer behind your husband's back. And right after Christmas is over, you know, kick him the hell out. That's what everybody uh, And your kids, your kids will get over it. Kids are resilient. And another thing, your kids are old enough to send them someplace during the day while you get yourself a job. That's right. Yeah. Because, you know, even, even like, his mom, because he's starting to have, a, like, a major alcohol problem. Oh, his, no. His brother is the... His oh, brother will no. come over to my house, Wendy, oh. and he'll, they'll sit here and they'll just drink and drink and drink and drink. And, like, I'm supposed to think that's okay. When I was younger, my parents would, you know, they would they were on drugs really bad and everything. And I grew up around that kind of environment. And I'm not doing that to my kids. Yeah. Because my kids come before any man. Yeah, you know what? Um, don't 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 kick them out of the house until after Christmas. But this will be the last Christmas that the kids get with the th- all, all five of you in one house. But for now, just like let everything be the way it is. And yeah, it's okay. But but you need to see a divorce attorney so you can hatch a plan and get him the hell out of there. Yeah, because that's what I want to do. Yeah, you got to get him the hell out of there. <laughs> yes, I know. I, and you know what? I've. I, I was very, very young when I had my kids and we got married. I mean, I got married when I was 17. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, like, it's been a long time. And I know you're always like, oh, you got to live, you got to live. Yeah. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. I, you know what I mean? Just to be on my own yeah. and know that I could do it on my own two yeah. feet without some damn man being beside me. You know what I mean? Well, be able to go out and party and do whatever I want without having to ask. Right. Or, you, got those, you got those three kids, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. I didn't think I was going to get through. Yeah. And And I love your show. I listen to it every day. Thank you very much, and happy holiday. You too. Thanks, Wendy. Bye-bye. We're going to continue with the break, everybody. We'll be back with more of the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLA. It's the greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams Experience. 
I want you to look at this picture of Dennis Rodman when he went to sign copies of his new book, I Should Be Dead By Now, in New York City. This is, he dressed like Beetlejuice. He's got the whole, I think it's a wig and the white face makeup, black around the eyes. Oh, wow. Very Beetlejuice-esque. Well, Dennis will be in the show today for the Hour of Truth. I've never met him before. I have a copy of his book. I should be dead by now. That's one for the records. His old book, I forgot what it was called. It was Dennis sitting on a motorcycle, though. That was um, bathroom reading for a very long time. You know, you put it there and you read a little bit and like that. Art, you're from Philadelphia. Do you know a man named Jared Heller? He's a former DJ, they say. He's 35 years old and... He was also a co-founder of Illadelph Records, a label that once produced the hip-hop group The Roots. Mm. Well, I just assume because you're from Philly, you know everybody. Nope. Nope. Well, he's a 35-year-old man from Philly, and he was sentenced to four months in prison on Monday for helping to dismember a murder victim in a case over in Denmark. <laughs> Four months. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, apparently over there, that's somewhat okay. Oh. His name is Jared Heller, and he had been held in jail since April when he turned himself in because he was being looked for by the police for the murder of a cab driver. In the hope in the Copenhagen City Court, Mr. Heller from Philly claimed that a 28-year-old Sudanese man killed the cab driver. And that he only helped cut up the parts and dispose of the body. He oh. didn't do the actual killer. Well, this is what happened. So they decided to charge, um, they, they decided instead of charging the man from Philly with murder or being an accessory to ki killing, because they didn't have enough evidence. Instead, he was convicted of desecrating a corpse and was immediately released, though, because that's only four months in prison. And he had already been in jail for over the four months. Yeah. So after he was sentenced, they wiped the record clean. He walked out. Mr. Heller from Philly said that he and his friend Ramon met the victim at a bar in Copenhagen where they had been drinking heavily and smoking hash. Oh, you ever smoked that before? How do they smoke that? I mean, I, I vaguely remember a thumbtack and a glass and and, you know, and a lighter yeah. and everything fills up right here. And then you get right to the edge of the table. You get right to the edge of the table right here, yeah. and you slide the cup over like this, you slide, and then, oh. and then you push it back over. So yeah, oh. it's weird though. You have to use a thumbtack so it doesn't tip over. Mm. You know, you put your rock on top of the. Th oh my god! Sorry, mother has moved. Yes, she has. Anyway, he said that after they smoked and drank all day. He went, they went over to his friend Ramon's apartment where Mr. Heller from Philly said that he heard a fight going down in the bathroom. He went to see what was going on and he found the cab driver unconscious in the bathtub. So he said he went back to the apartment and fell asleep. Apparently the bathroom was like down the hall or something outside the apartment. He went back to the apartment and fell asleep and he was, an, he was awakened by the sound of buzzing in the bathroom. He went in the bathroom again. His friend Ramon was using a power saw to cut the body up. Oh, my gosh. And uh, there were two legs that were, that were found in the trash container shortly after. And the rest of the body was found in a nearby alleyway. And so, you know, shout out to the Roots. Your man's a real life, well, dismember. I can't call him a killer, but. Yeah. Mm. It's worse to be there for the dismemberment. They need to get more time killing. You can just point the gun and turn your head. And you don't have to look that way. Just kind of shoot blindly like this. Yeah, yeah. Or have your knife out and just start swiping blindly. But to dismember, ooh. Mariah Carey, uh, we got to the bottom of who her boyfriend is. It's not the prince, gay Prince Albert. Can I say that? No. It's not Prince Albert. Apparently, it's a music executive named Mark Sudak. Do you know him? S-U-D-A-C-K. I just assume because you're from Philly, you know everybody. No. He's not from Philly, but I just assumed. Well, people are saying that Mariah was trying to keep her relationship with Mark Sudak under the radar. She guarded the romance fiercely, but now she's tired of hiding him. According to insiders, 
you know, Mariah being 35. This dude is 29. And he was a staffer at Mariah's record label when she when uh, she hired him as her house photographer back in 2004. Mm. So he went from being a house photographer to some sort of music executive. He leapfrogged up the ranks in Mariah's company to the point where he's listed as co-executive producer on her Emancipation of Mimi. In other words, she's his boss. And they are hot and heavy. This is the guy who's been sending the diamonds and the flowers and all along. I'm thinking, you know, <clears throat> it's somebody that we know. It's this guy. <clears throat> Congratulations, Mimi. <clears throat> Alexis Stewart, you know, so that Martha Stewart show has been canceled. And uh, now that now it's all come out, Alexis Stewart, she did this interview on satellite radio. Well, actually, she's got a show. It's called Whatever, Alexis Stewart's show. And so she indicated that she, first of all, she had sex with one of the cameramen. Yeah, and also, she's also admitted that she's experimented with lesbianism. Oh. Not not a far stretch for you or your mother. You know, I see it both I, very, so very clearly. <laughs> um, and that she didn't know what to do on the Martha Stewart show. Like, she felt like a fish out of water. Like, what do I do? What is, what is the part that I play here on this show? So, it's been canceled. So, she doesn't have to worry about that. So, we had Dennis Rodman during the hour of truth but next hour is the bonus hour where i'm going to give you the holiday food excuse me advice hour holiday food survival guide too keep it here it's windy man i want to sh- your fuck to each of you watch you eat each other like feet off your face get another woman up hire a hooker get some coke the windy williams Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm Mm-hmm. Hey everybody, welcome to Advice Hour. I like to start it off with Wendy's Medical Minute. And what I wanted to talk about today is mental health as it relates to mothers and children. Researchers at the Journal of Developmental Psychobiology took saliva samples from 100 children between the ages of three and four years old. They took this saliva in the morning. And they took the saliva from the children in the evening. And in a nutshell, what I wanted to pass along is that children whose mothers do not enjoy their jobs suffer increased stress levels all day long. So if you're a mother or a father, for that matter, hell, you know, a lot of fathers doing it for themselves. Uh, If you're a mother and you're not enjoying your job, just know that your, your kids could very well be wearing part of that stress. So if you're debating on whether to start a new job or a new career, quit the old place you've been working at for the new year, that might not be a bad idea because the young people who they took the saliva from, they say that um, their stress levels were more than doubled the kids whose parents actually enjoyed their work. So, um, you know, you don't like your job, your kids are stressed, you know, it's not good. All right. Anyway, 866-GET-WENDY. Please call if you've got something going on in your life and you want me to help you out with it. Not right now because I don't have anything up on my computer as to who's calling. She's got to, does she know she has to be back and forth with that? Art, all the the interns don't understand that. Yeah, she's in there helping her. Okay. Push the speed process along. Okay. Okay, good. Great. Well, I can give you guys my um, holiday survival guide. Okay, then you got this? Okay. All right. According to... All right, I ripped this out of the Star magazine, but I thought about you when I was reading it. (laughs) Here are the top 10 secrets of eating a lot and staying svelte this holiday season. Are you ready? Number one, they say eat red meat. Excuse me, eat red. Eat red. Red tomatoes, 
dishes with tomato fill you up without weighing you down. They're high in water content, which means fewer calories in tomato dishes. They didn't say red meat. They just said red, like tomato. Number two, they say indulge. They say you can't, you can't resist temptation. Indulge in dark chocolate. It contains less sugar than milk chocolate or white chocolate. Number three, slip in a quickie. They say 20 minutes of daily exercise is what you need to pump up your blood, raise your heart, and it'll help you ward off weight gain. Clarence is here. Here's the mail. Hey, Clarence. How you doing? All right. Number four, go fishing. This is you, Art. Yes, yes. Fish is one of the leanest forms of protein out there. Yes. When the appetizers come out, skip the pigs in the blankets and dip into the shrimp cocktail. And, of course, one of my favorites, which is Vita Herring. The herring in the wine sauce with the... Onions. Mm. Mm. Number six, they say drink a lot of water. Number seven, eat a lot of fruit. Number eight, they say go nutty. Almonds, walnuts, pistachios. They're all rich in vitamins and antioxidants, and, and they won't stick to your hips, but they'll satisfy your stomach. Number nine, beware of dairy. They say cream cheese and cream-based sauces are loaded with saturated fat. So get your fix by drinking skim milk. Ugh. Number ten. Breakfast is a name for a reason. Eat a breakfast. They say eat a breakfast. All right. Basically, these are 10 things that we already know. <clears throat> Let's go to the telephone. Line four is anonymous. An eight-year relationship. Wife is internet cheating, and she's younger than the husband. Hello? Hello? Do I have that correct? Your wife is internet cheating? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I embedded a software on my computer. It's called, uh, it basically monitors keystrokes. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's embedded in the hard drive in a mm. stealth mode, so Clever. she can't see it, but I can access Clever. it. And basically, if you uh, visited mm. certain websites and if you talked on any instant messenger it. and what you've said and so on. I love it. So, now, does it seem like she's having an affair with one person or a bunch of people? Well, here's how it started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, first, first, the first reason I put the uh, program on for was basically to get the... Um, my kids also use a computer, so mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that they were visiting the right sites and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so each person has their own screen name, and I basically monitored the kids. I never took a look at her. So, mm -hmm. so one day I decided to just go ahead and take a look. Yeah! I, I come to find out this woman has been talking to several different guys, mm -hmm. exchanging pictures... And uh, this has been going on for quite a while. Now I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm looking at all these conversations mm -hmm. and it has not evolved into anything more than just instant messaging. Okay. So I said, innocent enough, I can't say anything. I can't approach her. I'll just let it be. Is she, is she talking emotionally like I'm married? Uh, and I'm married. Uh, in some cases, I'm single. In some cases, I'm not happy. In some cases, everything is fine. Uh, you know, it's just different characters to different people. As far as I'm concerned, you can come out of the closet and swoop down on her now. Why well, wait until... Well, well, it gets better, Wendy. Well, you want to hear what happens now, because apparently um, I came home from work one night uh, mm -hmm. before, you know, because I drive for a living, so my hours vary. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I came home from work one night. She called me a couple of times before I got home and said to me, hey, listen, what time are you getting home? I said, um, I'm not quite sure. I'm down in South Jersey, and uh, it depends on what the dispatcher says. I might wind up somewhere else, so I'll call you when I find out. Uh, as it turned out, it was too late for me to go, uh, too late for her to go out, so she called me back and said, hey, you know what? I can't do anything tonight. I wanted a break from the kids, so I'll just do something when you're off the next time. I said, all right, well, I'm off on Wednesday. She said, fine, I'll do something on Wednesday. Then. I said, okay, no problem thinking it was all innocent, but there was this itchy feeling in the back of my head. I said, you know what? Let me really check this out. So when I get home, she's shutting the computer down, and she was on her phone at the time, talking to a friend of hers. I overheard the friend's voice, so I said, you know what? Can I say hi to uh, your friend? I don't want to say his name, but, you know, she said, uh, sure, no problem. She gave me the phone, and like six seconds after she gave it to me, she said, well, uh, you know what? Use your phone to call him. I said, I'm already on the phone with this man. Let me just talk to him for a second. She's yelling, give me back my phone. I walked out the house and I said, hey, what's up? Can I talk to you for a second? He said, sure. I said, let me ask something. Were you supposed to be going out tonight with my wife? Because they're friends and they do do that. They're co-workers. Uh, he said, why are you asking me that? I said, I need you to be honest with me and tell me straight up. Were you supposed to be going out with her tonight? He said, no, not at all. 
Okay, so now let's open up a can of worms because I'm saying to myself, okay, if she's not going out with this guy, there's got to be a third party involved. So now I said, okay, you know what? I'll let her call you back in a little bit. I go into her phone and I check her text messages. And what do I find? This woman sending a message to a guy saying, hey, listen, he's working late tonight. I can't come out. It's going to be too late. We'll do something on Wednesday when he's off. Wow. And he'll stay with the wow. kids and I'll come out and meet you. Why would you pos- like- How could you possibly think about waiting and holding off? And so, as far as I'm concerned, she has had sex with him at the busiest intersection in your town. As far as I'm concerned, she has already cheated. She's uh, already- Yes. Actually, I didn't know that until I had solid proof. Yeah. Because this program logs every conversation. Mm-hmm. And apparently, I love this. last Veterans Day, this woman was off from work and she was mm-hmm. supposed to stay home with the kids. Mm-hmm. She spoke to this man the night before and okay. said, hey, listen, I'm off on Thursday. Are you off? He said, yeah. Okay, you, said, okay you don't have to tell me anymore. So you're going to wait until after Christmas so that you don't... How, how old are the kids? The kids are six, three, and two. Yeah. I mean, are you ready for divorce or are you going to forgive? Because, you uh, know, d- d- uh, an affair does not mean the end of a marriage. No, I'm, 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 I'm ready for divorce, Wendy. Because what, what actually happened is the text message actually... The conversations in the chat actually says, hey, listen, I'm coming to see you at 9 o'clock, dropping the kids off. I'm going to drive one hour to this Damn, young man's see, house. This is okay. what I'm saying. If, if you're going to have a, a I'm fair, not going to be able to take a shower. Look at this. Well, so I'll bring some clothes and I'll take a shower at your house. A lot of plotting. Enough said, okay? If she put this much somebody- energy in her actual marriage, perhaps that she'd have a marriage that would go to nine years instead of just the eight. You know what? I mean, I wish you well. Um, you're not going to spring this on her or the kids until after Christmas, right? I don't know if I can hold out that long. I know, yeah. I know, I know. I know. You know what? That if you're going to do it, you need to do it today because at least that gives you a a full 30 days to figure out why Christmas won't be the same this year and how you're going to tell the kids. The kids will be fine. I know. See, you're with me. That's what divorce is for. The kids will be fine. You're going to pay your child support. You're going to be okay with the visitations. You just can't be with a cheat. There's some people like that. Well, you see, here's the thing, though. I just don't know if I want her to have custody of my kids. Well, you know what? Then you can fight her for custody. Damn, I hate men like this. At first, I loved him. All of a sudden, I hate him. I don't care what kind of whole harlot she is. Is she beating the kids? Are they best with their mother for right now? I I love my kids. Oh, my God. This woman, you know, I mean, it seems like she is actually... I'm not sure how many guys she's done this with. And that's the thing that... Lots. Lots. I'm sure you'll be going back in that hard drive and figuring it out. Yeah, it's like sleeping with the enemy. Yes! uh, Child, please. I understand. I wish you well. Do you have a a final question for me, or did you just want to vent? Well, what do you think I should do? I I mean, you're telling me to go another year, and I don't really think... No, 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 no. no. I'm not saying go another year. That's not what I said. I said... Figure out whether you really want to divorce her or whether you can deal with counseling and stuff like that. Listen, your wife put a lot into hatching these plans to cheat. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the woman is damn near brilliant if it weren't for the fact she married a man that was one step more brilliant. She would have gotten away with this. You're just driving and Miss Daisy and she's out, you know, getting her Daisy plucked. But here's the thing. If I were you, I would wait until after Christmas Day. I would do it for your kids. If you say you love your kids so much, sit on your anger until the the 27th. Or you know what? If you can, until after New Year's Day, right after the Black Eyed Peas and and Pig's Feet are finished, just as she's standing there trying to clean up, getting ready to go out for a jump off, you send the kids over to your mother's house and you all have an all-out World War II in your house. All out. Take the kids out of the house. You need to scream and get this hashed out. You need to have all your evidence ready. When you come at her, you need to be able to recite chapter and verse. Conversations. You heard? Yes. I like, I like that. Wait until, uh, wait, can you wait until January 2nd? Can you? I'll try my best. All I right. Like, I can't guarantee you. All that, right. The first weekend after thanks after Christmas, then. The first weekend after then, send the kids out of the house and make sure that they're spending the night wherever they are. Because this is going to be a good 24, 48, 72 hour fight. Make sure legal. make sure you fight with your keys in your pocket and also your credit cards. And also make sure that you have your money in your pocket. Because when you walk out of the house, you want it to be dramatic. And make sure your coat's in the car. Walk out with no coat and air thing. Like you're just so damn angry. You know what I mean? Right. Have all your favorites in the car and you stay down the street at the Notel Motel. Park around the back. Put one of those portable car tops. You can get one at Home Depot. Put one of those over your car. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? If yeah. you need any more assistance, get back to me. Yeah, but it really hurt me. Though, yeah, I, I understand. It really, it hey, listen, divorce is like death. It's going to be painful. I mean, we laugh yeah. about it. It's, it's it's no joke. Are you sure yeah. you don't want to put up with this? There's got to be positive. something. I can't. I can't look in this woman's eye. I can't. I can't even touch this woman right now at this point. I mean, I can't even. One of the guys she was talking to admitted that he had her feet ah! and other nose that she slept with him. So you know, it's like. Ew. I can't, you know what I mean? I can't go there. All right. You know what I mean? I wish you well. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dude, dude used up the entire uh, segment. He needed help, though. I mean, when people are thinking of, like, doing in their relationship at the holidays, it's like, if you have kids, I mean, you know, if you like like Art, Art doesn't care. Art ate fish on Thanksgiving. He was in Miami. He's on vacation. He didn't go to restaurants, nothing like that. And I totally understand that, you know, but it's just Art. But, you know, if you're, like, in a whole family way and stuff, do the kids a favor. You know, just, like, hold off on levying the boom, you know, and, and send them away for, like, 48 hours and then just all out war. And make sure all your immediate favorites are in, in your car and your car is not blocked in by his car so you can jump in and screech off with dramatic effect. Wendy, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The Wendy Williams Experience. The flu, it's powerful. When it hits, everything hurts. But now fight back with something powerful of your own. New Zycam Maximum Strength Flu. It helps rescue you from the worst flu symptoms. And new Zycam Maximum Strength Flu is virtually tasteless. It comes on revolutionary pre-dosed spoons that you stir into your favorite hot or cold beverage. You'll probably never even know it's there until you feel its power start to work. Now fight the flu a whole new way. Get Zycam Maximum Strength Flu. It goes down easy and nothing works harder. Thank you for your resume, Mr. Germ. Mr. Germ, my qualifications are excellent. Yes, but... I'm proficient in spreading myself around. I see, but Mr. Germ... We I really... love working closely with people. Very closely. If something comes up, we'll give you a call. Let's shake on it. I really don't think so. Oh, you're a hugger then. Oh. Come to Papa. Ew. Yes. Germs are everywhere. Hi, I'm Victoria Knight McDowell the school teacher who created Airborne, the original immune-boosting tablet. Try Airborne today. Every kiss begins with K. This holiday, K Jewelers proudly presents the Leo Diamond, the very first diamond to be independently measured and certified for its superior brilliance. Handcrafted by the master diamond artisans at Leo Schachter, the Leo, like all diamonds at K, is hand-selected to match beautifully. Collection priced from $599.99 to $7,000 at K Jewelers, your authorized Leo Diamond Jeweler. Every kiss begins with for the K-Jeweler nearest you, visit K.com. Okay, here's the scenario. It's 2 a.m. and you have to find a pharmacy to fill an emergency prescription. Walgreens has more 24-hour stores than anyone. And you'll be glad to know that Walgreens fills more prescriptions in the middle of the night than anyone. All Walgreens are connected, so your prescription records are on file, no matter which Walgreens you visit. If your Walgreens isn't open 24 hours, chances are there's one right down the road that is. So, every Walgreens is your Walgreens. It's one more reason. Walgreens is the Pharmacy America Trusts. The stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Just added Cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo, along with Jaheen. Vivian Green. And Donnell Jones. Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first-class night of fun in the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while Chuck Chill Out gets the party started. Chuck Chill Out in full effect. Mix and mingle with your favorite WBLS Air personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. And this is Mark Jordan. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Vaughn Harper. This is Champagne. This is Hal Jackson. This is the original Rude Boy David Levy. Along with special invited VIPs. You'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Putting an end to domestic violence. It's not just any party. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. Doggone it. Doggone it. 
Who the hell sent chocolate covered popcorn with oh. caramel inserts wow. to the studio? Why is my fat ass all over them? Mmm. Well, if I'm going down, I'm taking people with me. Nicole! Nicole and Elisa, I got some chocolate covered popcorn. It's premium with caramel inserts. Mmm, they're clusters. Look, I got you all. You all have your own bag. <laughs> I'll eat this one myself. <laughs> Did I hear that they added cameo to our BLS party with a purpose? Yep. Oh, yeah. that was my choice. It was something like, who would, who would you rather see if you were at a concert? And the other choices were good, legendary, but all their music is slow music. And I was like, uh-uh. I want a party. I want a party. You send Larry Blackman up there with that cup around his private area and those crazy costumes, and they say, attack me with your love, baby. Ow! Like candy. Oh, that BLS Christmas party with a purpose. Yeah, that's it. Mm, that's the death of you right there. Mm -hmm. That Christmas party with a purpose is going to be fire! Jaheem, Donnell Jones, Cameo. Get your tickets now. This hour, oh, but by the way, that's December 17th. I'll see you there, too. This hour, the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by Nissan. Driven. Well, it's still advice hour, and I would really love to go to the phone. Uh, let's hit line number two. No. Line number two hung up? Two is gone, yes. Well, is line three there, Lene? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lene? Lene? Listen, if you're going to tell your friend she's a hoe, then you got to plan on ending the friendship just in case she doesn't understand that you're only trying to help her. You know, you don't understand what I'm saying? There's, I hear you. Lynette, because there's really no way to say you're a hoe except to say, you know what, you're a hoe. And if she takes offense to that, um, then the, the friendship is absolutely over. If you're ready for that, then you're ready to call your friend a hoe. Well, I, I'm not. I'm really not. Okay, then, I, ho then hold your tongue. Okay. Then hold your tongue and just, you know, just, just hold your tongue and just be glad that she's the one living that life and that you can be her friend because it's always fun to have friends who are hoes. I got a hoe, I got a hoe girlfriend and she's been my girlfriend for a long time and I would never get rid of her and I'll tell you why. Because she is absolutely drop dead you know um you know the 36 24 36 long stretched out supermodel legs just you know the whole thing going on she's got a great job and she sleeps around and i and she's bisexual and um I mean, you know men men are like colors of the rainbow to her and you want to know what i love hearing the stories i love hearing them Oh, God. I mean, there's... But, uh, it's, it'd be different, though. She just wanted to hop in and out of bed. She wants to get with them. She wants to marry everyone she gets with. She breaks up. Two weeks later, it's a new man. And I'm the one that has to, to hear about it and know about it. And, you know, it's driving me nuts. You can't, you know can't, none of, uh, can't tell her the truth unless you're ready for the relationship to end. Because she... You guys are young enough now where she is going to not take a serious long look at her. She'll probably just, you know, say, you know, forget you. You're 24. She's 24. You know, if you guys were 34 and you call your girlfriend a hoe at 34, she might take a long look in the mirror like, what am I doing right? Lynette, Lene girl, you were right. You know what I mean? Right. I wish you well. Bye-bye. All right, line number, nine, line number seven. Sandy is 33 years old, and she's um, experiencing sexual harassment at work. Sandy, what's going on? Oh, Wendy, honey. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not me. It's the younger girls because I'm in a management position, and mm -hmm. they come to me, and it's kind of hard. I just need your backup on the advice that I gave her mm -hmm. is correct, mm -hmm. if you can help me. Mm -hmm. um, what I suggest that she do, being that I work for a company, they can't really bring, like, telephones, mini tape recorders, none of that in there. But what I suggest is she make a documentation of each time that this particular manager says something to her mm -hmm. and take it to HR. Mm -hmm. But she's in fear of losing her job. And then there's no helping her. That, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to tell them. Like, well, if, you're, if you, you can't complain about it and then not want to, you know, take the next necessary precautions to do something about it. Right. So, but I'm like in a bind because I'm like one of the only black female managers at this company and these men are pigs. They're like total pigs. Why can't you go to your supervisor and let your supervisor know that there are a lot of young girls coming to you regarding sexual harassment? Okay. 
and let your supervisor know, because your supervisor is probably going to say, okay, name names. Where's it coming from? And you say, well, it's Joe, Mm -hmm. and it's Dave, and it's Steve. And let them handle it from there. And then if nothing's done? Well, you would have let the record show. Okay. Okay, because, I mean, she's, she's crying, and... I mean, it's sad. Because How old there's, is she? She's like 18. Oh, boy. Just got first job, yeah. first apartment, and she's so scared. And she thinks that it's like if she says something, she's going to lose her job. But I'm like, no, that's unacceptable. Right. You know, I don't care if he's in management or not. He has no right to be like, ooh, your butt looks nice. You wearing a thong. I mean, come on now. Why can't she have a little tape recorder inside of her? They um... have to go through security. Mm. If I, if I could bring one in for her, I would let her hold it. I think I might do that. I might just bring it to micro I- tape recorder. Being that I'm a manager, we don't get checked like they do. Good idea. And I'm going to let her hold it Good. just so she can have it. There you so go. did I do the right thing? I think you did. Oh, Wendy, thank you so much, sweetie. I even like the idea of you um, bringing that tape recorder, letting her hold it. Yeah. I do. Because it's, it's, it's sad. Yeah. All right. All right, sweetie. You have a nice holiday. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. All righty. Line six. This is real quick. Uh, Daisy. Daisy. Hi. Hi. What do you need? I know legal services. Um, Who are you going after? Oh, Wendy? Yeah? It's not Daisy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's the fake name. Oh, wait. Are you line six? Is this line six? I'm sorry. Well, as long as you're on the phone. How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) How you doing? What can I help you with? It's still advice hour. Wendy, mm. I wanted to comment on the lady that had the uh, sexual harassment thing. Yeah. She's, she, being that she's a manager, mm-hmm. she's actually obligated to go to human resources. Oh. She's, she's definitely obligated by the law to go to human resources okay. and report that on behalf of the employee. Done. If something happens and, yeah. and she found that she knew about it and mm-hmm. she didn't do anything, mm-hmm. she could be liable along mm-hmm. with the company. Mm-hmm. So make sure you tell her that, okay? Oh, she's still listening, I'm sure. Oh, okay, good. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Okay, take care, Wendy. Um, in the meantime, WBLS we gave away $107,000 in our cash guarantee. And the winning is still continuing on Thursday morning, which is December 1st at 6 a.m. Listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show on how you can be part of our $1,000 winner every hour contest. Isn't that great? To qualify, though, you have to sign up to our WBLS e-newsletter e-newsletter at WBLS.com and then listen beginning Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Steve will wake you up and he's got all the details on that contest. Sounds like a good one. A thousand bucks every hour. Boy. More winners more often. WBLS. Hey, that's the new catchphrase. What do we say? Today's R&B and classic soul. Hey, Art, Larry Blackman and Cameo are going to be at the Christmas party with a purpose. Yes, yes. Isn't that fabulous? Love them. Today's R&B and classic soul and more winners more often. Oh, Daisy's online number seven. Hi, Daisy. Yes, hello. Hi, you suing somebody? Um, yeah. I want to su- Hello? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hi, hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. Daisy, if you listen to your radio, you're going to be behind. Yeah, I just turned it down there anyway. You go. Okay. But how are you? I'm doing well, Daisy. And you? I'm so happy to be talking to you. Well, I, I listen to your show all the time. Thank you. And I've heard so many good advices already. Thank you. Now, word on the street is that you need a good attorney in New yes, Jersey. I- Yes, I do. Yeah. I know there was a time a little while ago you did refer, uh, make a reference to somebody in Newark. Yeah, Hunt. I actually want to sue my management company. Mm. <laughs> Go, look for Ray Hamlin. H-A-M-L-I-N. H-A-M-L-I-N. Ray? Ray Hamlin. And he's in Newark? Yeah, his law firm is Hunt, Hamlin, and Ridley. Ridley. And go to HuntHamlinAndRidley.com for more information. They're on Park Place, the downtown Newark. Thank you so much, Wendy. I keep up the good work. You're welcome. Thanks, Have Daisy. a nice holiday. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm sorry. Um, I got to get to the um, <laughs> popcorn and caramel. So we'll continue with the break. And we'll be back with more Advice Hour next. Mm-hmm. The Wendy Williams Experience is on the radio. Dennis Rodman's coming in for the Hour of Truth. His new book is called I Should Be Dead By Now. We will meet and talk to Dennis Rodman. In the meantime, it's still Advice Hour here on The Experience. 
And it's time for the people poll question. Where we left you on Wednesday, our last day working was, do you visit your dentist at least once per year? 80% of you all said no, uh, yes, and 20% said no. Good. The new question is, Art made this up. Is your holiday budget over $500 for gifts? Oh, excuse me. Is this $500 or $1,500? $1,500. Oh, okay. Is your holiday budget over $1,500 for gifts? Is it? Do you have over $1,500 that you'll be spending this year on gifts? We'd just like to know a little bit more about the audience. You can go to my website at thewendywilliamsexperience.com. This is for gifts. I'm not talking about decorating the tree and buying the food. Uh, the gifts. Okay. Um, I need to use the telephone, Art. That's the thing. I, I need to use the phone. You have to hang up that phone. Okay. No, no, no. no. Art, this is a very small break. I'm sorry. I got Sandra on line number six. Her husband's mother refuses to tell him who his father is. The sister-in-law told her, and she should tell her husband. Look, you're going to keep me out of this one. I want to talk to her and tell her, mind her own damn business. This is my life. It sounds like my life. She's reciting. Husband's mother refuses to tell who his father is. Mm -hmm. Sister-in-law told her. That would be my sister-in-law, Kim. She should tell her husband. I don't know. That, that's that's you all's business. That Sandra, you're not you're you're married to your husband, but that's that's his him and his family's business. At least that's how. I, all the best you can do is gather the food and make sure that the house smells like holidays. That's it. That's the best you can do. And don't withhold on the sex. You know, keep your hair done. Keep the kids clean. You know, give him a little bit of a break because it's holiday season. Do you know what I'm saying? Or I really do need to talk to Sandra. She's having a 911 emergency. Or maybe it's just me. I just want to say. Uh, Sandra's going to be on line number six. Sandra, now you hold on, Sandra. Now you hold on, Sandra. I'm coming. I'm sc- Go take the phone. You have to hang it up for me to hear her. Hello? Yeah, you got to hang up the phone, Goose. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You got it. Go ahead. Sandra? Hello. Hi, Wendy. Sandra, we're living one in the same life right now. Now, listen. <laughs> okay. What's your husband's last name? It's a common name. I'm going to... All right. We'll call him Smith. Okay. Close enough. You married into the family, Sandra? Yeah. yeah. That is Smith family business. Okay. I, I mean, the, the funny thing about it is I knew. I knew before she even told me. We had this conversation, I believe. We got married May 14, 2005. Why isn't your, why isn't your mother-in-law talking? She's... You know what, Wendy? I really don't want to even get into no, that. No, I understand. She really, I mean, <laughs> she refuses to let okay. anyone know. Okay. His, um, fa- my father-in-law, uh-huh. the one that uh-huh. I know, uh-huh. um, he doesn't even know. Uh-huh. And the week before we got married, like I said, we got married this year. Does your mother-in-law we- know that you know? No. Mm-hmm. No. Is she, is she coming to your house at Christmas? No, hell no. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> no, she's, I'm seven months pregnant, and I'm, I'm due to give birth. Eh, 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 eh. There's only one Mrs. Smith, and that's you. Okay. Okay. Um, this is really bad. I, I don't even want to go into the, really the family dynamics and how bad it is. But, but your question is, should your sister-in-law tell your husband? I think she should. Well, stay out of it. You're seven months pregnant. Stay out of it. Stay, I, I really, stay out of it. <laughs> I am going to stay out of it, but I really think that she needs to let her brother know. I think everyone knows but him, oh, and, gosh. and and, and oh. I, I don't I don't like it. You're He's talk- twenty seven years you're old. We're about to have a you're talking my life. Yeah, but I still think that you should stay out of it. The best thing you can do is, along with being pregnant, mm-hmm. make sure that you know. This Wendy, this man is out here, and he's looking to oh, talk to his shut son. Up, shut yes, up, shut the sister up, saw him. Shut up, yeah, shut the sister up. saw him. They were. I don't know. This is in Richmond. The sister saw him and said, "Please, I want to know. Please give me his number. Let me know." The mother told the sister, "If you ever let him know, I will threaten to take your kids away you from you." You see this? Bitch? You see this? You see, you see what this mother-in-law is? You see this? Bitch? It's horrible. It's horrible. And they were all over for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, my God. Not the mother. Not the mother. Okay. But this sister and her three kids, and my mom loved it. It was really, really nice. It was really nice. We had this discussion. He was upstairs. with. It, um, you know what? This is between your husband and his mother. That's it. She's never going to tell him, though, one day. You know what? Then she will burn in hell. 
Mm. with the rest. So I shouldn't say to his sister, can you please let him know? Uh, sure, you can have a side... For you, genetics. You, you, can have a si- mean, you can have a side... Con- I know what you mean. You can have a side conversation with the sister-in-law, but don't let her drag you into the actual tallation. Okay, because she said, can you kind of, you, should, you can kind of mention it to him. I'm like, how do you mention to someone that their biological father right, is this uh, Okay, this is what you do. Okay. You, bring, you invite your sister-in-law over. Do you have any children already? No, no, this is our first together. Good. You yeah. invite you invite your sister-in-law over. Well, they live in Maryland. I don't care. It's it, a different, it, it, well, he it, lives in Maryland, too. Wendy, we live in two different states. Okay, but this is the deal. Then, okay. you, then you go for a visit and you make sure there's no kids around. Okay. And while you're in the other room preparing the hot wings and keeping the brown juice going okay. and just basically staying out of their business, but you're just providing the, the, the snacks. Right. And also a steady hand to hold the wheel as you white knuckle it back home afterwards. Right. Because. You let them talk. I got to go. You let, okay. you, you let them talk. Okay. Look, you're singing to the choir. You, you're, okay. you're, you're, you know. Okay. Thank alive. you, Wendy. T- take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. I felt like I was talking to myself. All right, Maria is on line number four, and her ex won't leave her alone. Uh, Maria, hello. Yes. How does he bother you? Wendy? Yeah? Yeah. Um, basically, I broke up with him oh, almost a year ago, uh-huh. and he still won't drop it. He bothers all my friends talking about me, like, why won't you take me back, and this and that. How old is he? Um, he's 10 years older than I am. And still acting so immature? Yes. Which is one of the many reasons I broke up with him, but the main one was that he cheated on me multiple times, and multiple times I forgave him, and... Don't you have any big brothers? Do you have any th- anybody like that? See, still? I do, but the problem is my big brother would kill, kill him. him. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Which is why I, I didn't tell my brother. I mean, I don't. I don't really know what to say other than make make, all, make sure all your friends are giving a uniformed result, and that is Maria doesn't want to be with you. I, I, I'm really not good with this one. I've never been with the stalkerazzi type. <laughs> you know, I always just figure, you know, my word is my bond. You know, we're over. You know, leave me alone. That's it. I don't I don't get when, when men hang around. Yeah, and that's my thing because, I mean, I've made myself very, very clear to him. You better watch your back then when you're out. Like, you know, going to the malls and, and you know, out at the clubs and all like that. You know, he sounds like he, there could be something wrong with him. Yeah. But I would just say make sure that all your friends are giving the same uniform response. Which is, you know, she doesn't want you. Leave her alone. Yeah. She's moved on. And gosh, she's 35 years old, you know? Yes. <laughs> and that's, that's my biggest thing. Like, well, I wish you well, Maria. Thank you, Wendy. Um, shout out to Tasha, who's on line number five. She's 39. She's trying to get over her fiancé. Um, there is no quick, fast answer, Tasha. It took time to fall in love. It'll take time to get over it. Time, time, Natasha. Thanks. Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy, Wendy Williams, if you don't know me, I'm not your punching bag. You're going to blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, experience, experience. Hi. Before we open the door to Dennis Rodman, shout out to all the affiliates on the Wendy Williams Experience Radio Network. Um, understand that, um, you know, the same music is played all around the dial. Let's not get it twisted. But Dennis Rodman is only on one show right now. So if we go over, just ride with the situation. Okay, what? We open the door for Dennis? We can open the door for Dennis? Yeah. No, she got the eight-second delay out there. <laughs> Open the door for she's busy flirting. What are you doing? Oh, are you flirting? No, I'm trying to make sure he stays with two It's oh. the worm. The worm. The worm. Hey, worm. No cursing. No cursing, Dennis. <laughs> What's up, What's up, man? Five championship rings, endless tattoos. First thing you ask when you get up here is this a black station? Absolutely. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I saw it. Oh, wait, he wants headphones. No, they're in interns, interns, oh, headphones. No, no, it's okay. All right, no, we we'll use. No, no, don't, don't worry about it. I can hear you. Go ahead, baby. Wait, you know, when Wendy, you want me to do your show, right? Yes. The H one. Yes. Let me tell you something, honey. You know what? You're talking to me, Dennis Rodman. Yes. You know what? I think your show is kind of um, low budget for you. No, not really. It's kind of. Turn your mic around so we can understand each other. Can you hear me? Yes. You all good, baby? Uh huh. Right on. Are you married? Yes. Why? Just, I like it. It's, you know, Wednesday like it. it'll be seven years. Really? Yeah, it's, it's working so yeah. far. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. You've never been married? I've been married three times. Oh, wait. Carmen Electra. That, yeah. This is like 22 minutes. You know what? Um, and a, You're black, so and, let's keep it that way. <laughs> two other, uh, what does that <laughs> mean, Dennis? I did. You're black. <laughs> anyway, you know what? I, I was married to Carmen like two weeks, but we were together for two and a half years. Yes. And uh, I was married before that two months. <laughs> And, yes. and now I'm married for two years, so it's mm -hmm. all good, baby. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Now, this is the woman that was living, I think you had houses next to each other, or you still no, have no, it no, that no, way? No. We were better um, living separate. Separately. And uh, she lives like two miles away, and I live in my house on the beach, and she lives in inland. And and so you're still married, and it's working. Oh, it's, it's, all, it's all good. I mean, we have our problems, you know. Yeah. Living with me is, is an issue. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's an issue. Yeah. So, so now, were, were you there for Thanksgiving? Yes, I was. I was there for my kids and my wife and uh, stepdaughter, and I uh, took them out, and uh, we had a good time. Now, you have a daughter um, that I know of. What other children do you have? I have uh, four kids, uh, stepkids, five, make five, um, one in Sacramento, and three in us in um, L.A. And all three of your baby's mothers are white? You know what? I'm just asking. We talk black, white, and gay uh, and straight okay, here, what, too. What, Come what, on. Yeah, they're all white. They're all white. Okay. All right. Now, it was many, 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 many years ago. Um, I believe I was reading stuff about, like, Dennis riding around with a gun in the car. Yeah, your baby's yeah. mother wouldn't let you see your, your daughter. Yeah. And, and that at that point was like a turning point in your life. Yeah. You went out and tatted yourself up. You got, you know, I guess you embraced who you really were. It's just that. You know what? You, know, you, you, got to, you come to that crossroad in your life, mm -hmm. and uh, you get to that point in your life that uh, you have to make a decision how you want to direct your life and, and force your life in, in a situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at that point in my life, I think that when my wife left me with my kid and took a lot of things from me, and the situation in Detroit with the team, everything kind of kind of pulled to me into this this other universe. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, where am I going? A, a country boy coming to Detroit and. You know, I'm lost. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, I, um, I had no direction. And I think, you know, as far as, like, being in the country, we just do one thing. So we go out and do, you know, this crazy thing and stuff like that. So I had a gun. And it wasn't about shooting myself. It was more like killing the identity of being alone. Yeah. So, and uh, I did it. And uh, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Yeah. You know, so. The rest, cause, because, I mean, you have, I, I don't think that we'll see another Dennis Rodman. I, I, don't, I don't think you'll see anybody uh, as far as, like, uh, people don't. It portray me as a basketball player anymore. No. It's, it's more like a, a pop icon. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah, you are. I, I crossed over. Yeah. And uh, if I play basketball, it's all, hey. If you, It's fine, but it's if, you, fine. If, if you I don't, don't, it's all good. I have a picture that I was passing around. Where's that picture of Dennis on um, signing day in New York City for his new book? <laughs> I should be dead by now. I ripped it out of the National Enquirer. Right, I said, right, look at this, right. mother father. All right, mother father. A mess. Yeah, is your good. mom still alive? Yes, she is. Does she? I mean, is, and she's a black woman. She's black, and she's very strong. I think that's where I get my uh, independence from. But, but you have um, spoken publicly before about black women versus white women yeah, and I why have, you have, have problems with black women. You know what? I'm probably the only guy black guy to go out public like that yeah <laughs> you know because i think when i was um when i was 18 19 years old when mm -hmm. i was struggling back in the ghetto and the projects and stuff like that a lot of black women wouldn't even talk to me they thought i was too ugly uh i was i was i have enough money you know it's all about the guys have money basketball players athletes and stuff like that and um so um I think that that kind of swayed me to be more on the other side for us white women and stuff like that I, 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 don't, I don't hate black women at all i love okay. black women i love them you know, I think they're very gorgeous, but I think that, uh, you know, as far as my insecurity, as far as my, my younger years, mm -hmm. has got me to this point where uh, well, I'm afraid I'm going to talk to one and say, oh, well, you know. So it's, Are it's you still like making that. money? Uh, is that what, is he, so you admit then the problem is you, no. not necessarily with black women. No, no, no. I think, I think it's just me only. I mean, black women, they're attracted to me. It's more like me, more like... I don't know if they want me or my money or they, money. Like, they like me or just something like that. Uh -huh. Because back in the day, it was more like, yeah. well, you're not good looking enough. You're, right. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, so, you know, but. The, the uh, white girls are genuine. Well, no, no, no. White girls. Did, when you fight with white the white girls, girls, do they white, call you the N word? No, 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 no. White girls are slutty too. Big don't worry black. about it. They're slutty too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, they're no different. So. Okay. Uh, but I, I just think that it's connect more because I've been around them so much. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I was around black girls more, you know. It'd be a lot of different story, but like I say, I'm a. Tr like I At said, the I end of the day, mind. though, you know, you're nothing but an N. 
Pretty much. <clears throat> pretty and, much. And pretty much. Do you like to be called? Do, do you like them to call you Big Black and in the bed? Like, ooh, oh, call me you Big Black. You know what? You're reading the book, ain't you? <laughs> you know <laughs> what? You're a bastard. You read the book. You read the book, you're, ain't you? You're, you're, the, you the, the book with the motorcycle, and I forgot what it was called. It sat in our bathroom at home, and we would just go through this book on a regular. <laughs> this book right here, your brand new one. What All was right. the old book called? It you were on the motorcycle. Um, it was the um, uh, Better Some Want to Be. Love that book. Right. This book right here is definitely a must read, everybody. Right. It's called I Should Be Dead Now. Dennis Rodman is in the studio. Um, the Rebound King, Five right. Ring Wearer. Right. Let's talk about um, who you think the Rebound King is now in, in the NFL. Or, excuse me, NBA. Get the sport right. Look, look at you. Look at you. Who's girl. the king now? If it's, you, you, if know, it, you know what? You know what? As far as the NBA is concerned, I think the NBA is not a. It's quite what it used to be. Okay. I think that, that the personality and the uh, character of the NBA is not up to par. You know, you only had Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, Michael Johnson, uh, Scottie Pippen. You had all those great, great players back in the day. And now it's more like individuals now. It's more like, okay, great. How much money can I make? Yeah. How much I can do this, 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 this? And then you see guys on the bench with the faces like, uh, screw this, screw this, screw this, screw this. What can I do? You know, but it's more like, um, and I think that uh, when we play, it was more intense. More intense. It wasn't about the money, it's about winning. Now it's more like, you know, everybody's frustrated. Yeah. Everyone's frustrated. And uh, I think a lot of people want to see me back out there. I want to get back out there. Do you? And uh, for Isaiah Thomas, for the New York Knicks, Isaiah, if you listen to this, brother, I'm going to tell you something. Don't be a punk. Don't I was going to ask you if he's right. offered you a job. No, everyone's offered me a job. It's the fact that it's that I think I've told my agent here, Darren Prince, very good guy, very good guy. Uh, and he is a Jewish guy. Uh, okay. uh, so he's Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, told, I told him, I said, you know what? I must be that famous for people not to get me. Because I look at it like this. You got guys on the bench, uh, any professional sport, mm -hmm. put me there. Yeah. I have had the stadium for me. Yeah, yeah. Those will be your for, people. For me, at least my people, right? Yeah. At least I draw people. Yeah. But... It's very frustrating. I mean, we could use a draw oh, in the NBA. Draw. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You need a character. Do you jump off with black women? Can we get back oh, to that for just a moment? I mean, you, you, do you do you do, are you having sex with? Do you have sex with black women at the very least? I mean, you know, you know what? You know what? Like this. You know what? I, know, I have no. Ask me anything, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if I wasn't married, you know what? I have no problem having sex with any culture. Yeah. Not, not, not men, women. Uh, you know what? Uh, I was like, once, I was going to ask you about Wendy. the, the no, gay no, thing. No, 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 no. I've never experienced uh, having sex with men at all. But you know what? Have you ever gotten a professional from a man? No. Oh. No, 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 no. Not even close. Not you know even what? received one? Because art says that a mouth is a mouth. A mouth is a mouth. It's a mouth and a mouth? A mouth is a mouth. They don't even look at you, bro. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> they don't even look at you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even look at you, so it's like, hey, you know what? You know what? But, but what? Uh, you've never. Uh, you, I, you know, I, I would agree with him 100%. You know what? If you're drinking and stuff like yeah. that, if someone is giving you that, that thing, that special pleasure. Yeah. On your special purpose. Yes. You know what? It doesn't matter. After you get through, it's, uh, okay, great. Right. Man. It's all good. There you go. But, uh, you know what? I Me, mean? I, I, I really don't care. But uh, as far as like, people trying to say I'm gay, I'm not gay. Oh, okay. But you, but you know what? I'm very free with my individuality and my, and my sexual. Have you, you romantically know? kissed a man? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, are you I mean, kidding? Hey, did Penny Hardaway ever hit on you? Oh, like this, like, like this. All guys have kissed on me once before. Every guy probably on this planet, pretty much, has kissed on Dennis Rodman's body. Well, yeah. hold on, let me ask the expert. Yes. Never mind, the expert is answered. Yes. 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 You've had him? Uh, Dennis is great. <laughs> wow. You know what? Let's please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear back in the day about Penny Hardaway and Dennis Scott? Were you oh, were you shocked? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, seriously. I wouldn't be surprised if there are gay guys in the NBA or any professional. Oh, no, who would be surprised at that? You know, if, if, I, if, I, would, if I was gay in the NBA, if it's, oh, that's just Dennis. That's just Dennis. Yes. Right? It would be surprised. Oh, that's Dennis, whatever. But anybody else, oh, you know. Yeah. What size shoe do you wear? Oh. You have a narrow. Your feet look, your, your feet actually look very nice and contained. Really? And contained? In your fancy shoes. What kind of, um, what size shoe These shoes cost me 30 bucks. They look fancy. <laughs> really? Yeah. What did you got? Buy them thrift? They were uh, already broken in? Broken in? I'm just asking. How many tattoos do you have? Or oh, is yeah. it just one big, massive tattoo going on? Look at here, honey. I'm pretty good in here, I think. You know, so that's my true agent. Right there. Yeah, no, I saw him outside with you. Oh yeah. Hey, how was how was sex with Madonna? Did she, is she really like a like a circus? Um, it, or was it ha like having sex with a normal woman? Normal woman. 
Yeah. Not a big deal. Did she take the third input? Oh. You know what? If I'm just she, asking. If you, if you want it there, I'll give it to you. Did she want it there? Just what? Put it, put it, put it, she wanted a third party. How about that? Oh, okay. She, she wanted another one in there. Yeah. Hey, I mean, was her, was her professional... Any no, better no, no, than no, no. I mean, I've had. <laughs> are you kidding? Come on. I I just had to ask. Oh, absolutely. Because it's always my belief that those who put it out there the most are either the most normal or sometimes sucky. Like I think that Mariah Carey and Beyonce they lay like this on the pillow. You know what? They they absolutely. Wendy, they, they do nothing. Wendy, I'm gonna tell you something. In my mind, I'm all you that. listeners, 12 million viewers out there, listeners, how about this? Wendy has a big mouth. So let you guys know that she's a big mouth. I'm just saying. I just, you know. Um, so, <laughs> right. So you would make a serious comeback in the NBA. Yes, what would it take to get Rodman on? Uh, uh, you know, suited up. I think uh, a very um, strong uh, GM. I, I think he's be. I think he's beyond money. Uh, while financially, I'm sure I don't, you I don't care about money. See? I, I don't care about money. He's bigger than that, Arthur. I don't, I don't care about money. Arthur's I don't care about money. Arthur's pressing the, uh, the, the cha-ching, cha-ching. No, 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 no. Never. How Never. are you financially, Dennis? As my agent here, Tay. I'm very well off. Okay. Very well off. And so what does it take to get you back in the NBA? I think, it's, I think it takes a strong individual to, to bring Dennis Rodman there. And I think if someone wants a draw, because you know what? If you ask any owner... They care about the championship, but they want the stands to be filled. Hell the yeah. people there, they, that's all they want Hell is make sure that's filled. Yeah. That's it. Hell when yeah. you don't see the seats filled, oh, we got problems. There's a problem. That's a problem. So basically, I can do that. Yeah. I can do it no matter what. I did it for Dallas, L.A., uh, Detroit, Chicago, San you Antonio. You can do it for New York, too. I do it for everybody. And everyone wants me. Do you get along with Allen Iverson? Could you do that for the 76ers? You know, I don't get paid to like people. I get paid to play and, and win. Woo. Okay, okay. I don't get paid to like people. I get paid to win. All right. That's the, that's the main thing. What people don't understand today in, in sports, we don't care if, if we like each other. You know what? We come to work. I don't care if I like you. I'm talking to you, right? We get paid to work. That's our job, to work. Do you like the, the new dress code with the NBA? I wish I was back there. I swear to God, I would, I would have some special. <laughs> oh, special. What do you what? It's a white girl. I bring the white, white girl, girls in oh, to keep yeah, you subdued. Where's the one Dennis Rodman for one Halloween? No, what? This, this, past, this past Halloween, I was crisscross. Crisscross? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Crisscross. Crisscross. Wait, wait, wait. Go back in the other room. Go back in the other room. I don't know. We got limited time on our breaks here. The the, the syndicators start drumming their fingers, and we're talking about crisscross. Back to you. The dress code. The the dress code. Are you down with the dress code for the NBA? Uh, She's black, though. You hit a black woman. Uh, Oh, that's what you do to us. You sexually harass us, and you treat the white girls. You know what? Uh, You know what? Is Carmen Electra, um, how's her sex game? She's okay. She's just, okay. I mean, just regular she's normal. a beautiful girl. And, uh, Dave, I don't like her new husband. I, I don't. You know, Dave Navarro, I've been on Dave Navarro for 12 years. She before freaked, I met Carmen. She, she freaked she, out his, her situation, though. Uh, you know what? Dave Navarro's a good guy. He's a good guy. And uh, I think Carmen likes that feminine, you know, little... Quality in a man. feminine quality in a guy. Yeah. I think that's her style. So, you know what? I support her no matter what. But yeah. uh, a lot of people say, how does she, can she go from you... To him, that's it. I don't know. Maybe she likes that. But you both have similar qualities. I can say. No, no, no. I'm more of a man, honey. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm more of a man. So let, let, let's talk. <laughs> I'm more of a man. Let's talk about um, um, outside of the NBA. Yeah. Um, are you invested in like Starbucks in businesses that we know of? No. What I'm doing is, um, you know, I can't talk about it, but. Okay. Uh, um, my agent has got me in a lot of investments around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I have restaurants in China, Very Japan, nice. uh, Waikiki. And when Hawaii. you go in there, you're like the big black man. They love, they fall all over you. Not really. I don't give a damn what they do to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm about uh, having a good time. I love people. I love people. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't like the richy, rich people. I love people, normal yeah. people. Yeah. And uh, when people see me in clubs and stuff like that, I love hanging out. and, and, and With everybody. the people. I love them. I love them. I love him. Black, white, it doesn't matter. I love people. Do people try to try your manhood? I mean, just test just test you, 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 you know? You know what? When they read my books and stuff like that, like, why, they kind of like embrace me like, oh my God, you got the same situation I got. Yeah. Uh, I got the same uh, ideals and this, this, this. I love you. Dude. You ever you hang out the, with a bunch of white guys and somebody calls you with the N-word in the crowd? And it, 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 doesn't like, it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't bother it you. Does, it doesn't bother me. I've heard it all from nigger, this, 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 this. Yeah. It, it don't matter to me. I don't care. 
you know, I understand they're frustrated. Guess what? They get to like me. They get to like me. Did you get the new Carmelo Anthony's that were released this weekend? Do you even care about sneakers like that anymore? You don't care about that crap? No. Yeah. yeah I didn't get the Michael Jordan if I was with him, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, who are your friends? Dennis Rodman's in the studio, everybody. Affiliates, we're about to take the break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to have another um, segment with Dennis. But yeah. real quick, who are your friends? Now, apparently, your agent. Yeah. Couldn't be your agent all these years no. without being your friend as yeah. well. Yeah. And he's a young guy. I already saw him. Yeah, yeah, he's a young guy. He uh, looks like he can, you he's know. He's like 33, 34. Yeah, he likes um, a little drink he, he, also. He's a um, good guy. And who else are your friends? Um, friends. Just, just regular guys. Just regular guys. Regular guys. Right. Regular guys. That's it. Yeah. Mm. So listen, I'm glad that you're here on the Black Girl Radio Show. <laughs> it's a new Black Girl Radio Show. And so um, I want you to stay for another um, for another break. I would like to have a conversation with you. I, I would, you could ask me anything, honey. I would like, if possible, I, I, believe me, I'm go not going to leave a stone unturned. Let's do it, baby. All right. It's it, Dennis Rodman, it, everybody. Wendy, man. Presently, my um, husband just got discharged from the military. But now he's home, and I just want to tell him... To get the f out. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell me I want to lose this. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Oh my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> Let me know what the winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win Thursday, December 1st, beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. I see a vest with it. I see exactly what's going on. WBLS 107.5. Okay. I can tell you exactly what's going on back there in the pink room. I don't even have to be back there looking. So Dennis is in the production room with Hollywood. Right, Shaylin? Hey, this is Dennis Rodman. How you doing? He's doing drops. Nicole is sitting at her desk stewing because Nicole is in love with Dennis Rodman. But Elisa is taking all of his time. Elisa, who was like, mm, mm, you know how a lot of we black women, we kind of get the same feeling of Dennis Rodman. Like, mm, mm, you know, me too, me too. Admittedly, me too. Nicole was on it. She was righteous. What? She said she had more dreams and more thoughts about him coming in here this whole Thanksgiving weekend than anybody. Like, so, you know. So she's all like a wide-eyed puppy. And then Dennis comes in and Lisa's back and forth in the studio with some stupid thing about whatever Kristen, the intern, was talking with some Halloween. What? And he said, no, no, no. That was Elisa's way of coming in and being back up under Dennis. While Nicole, my everything sits in her office, probably on her two-way Blackberry. Bitch all over him. <laughs> Go ahead, click or Make with the clickety-click. Oh. Oh. Dear everybody, <laughs> Elisa is all over Dennis Rodman. I can't even get my picture or my hug with a rock. Nicole talking about last week, I'm going to hug him with a rock. You know what that is, everybody? You hug and you rock. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, make sure you get your hug and rock in. Get your hug and rock in. <laughs> oh my gosh. This hour of the Wendy Williams experience is being brought to you by MasterCard. When you carry MasterCard, you carry clout. At least that's what they said back in the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s and 70s too. That's so that's how I remember it. When you carry MasterCard. The ultimate Christmas party is the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. It's on December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom, the Marriott Marquis. By the way, I'm going to take tell. Oh, Dennis, come on back in. Sure. You know what? You weren't really supposed to come back in right now, but you're leaving? Yeah, I'm leaving. No? Uh... Yeah. Wait. Come here. Why are you leaving? I have a nickel. What is this? Is this? I have a nickel. I have a... Huh? Why are you leaving? Wow, you have one of those pants from back in the day oh, with the split in the side. I am. We 
Wait, why are you um? Wow, he's got a good love trail art. Look at his love trail. Pick up your pick up your shirt. It's called an invitation line. We're right. Whatever. <laughs> you know, it's this thing right here. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Look, why are you leaving? Because it's the black girl show. Yeah. See, get him, <laughs> Elisa. There she is. There she is again. You there there she is again. I'm leaving, baby. No, Don't call me a sucker. <laughs> Don't call me a sucker. Come on, take some take some telephone calls from your fans, and we're going right. to talk to you a little bit longer. Put your headphones on. Yeah, put your headphones right. on. Well, the affiliates are going to be mad because Dennis is leaving when we're, well, are you doing a book signing in New York, by the way? Another one? He doesn't want to take his hat off. Yeah. No, I'm not doing a book signing, honey. Look, we're going to talk to some of your listeners, okay? Let's go, baby. All right. Oh, I hope there are no black women. <laughs> no, no, yes. They'll cuss me out. Boy. Hello. Hi. You're on with Dennis. They'll cuss me out. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Okay. Dennis is here, too. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Dennis. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, I wanted to ask you um, about the woman that you, your your wife. Yeah. Your present wife. How Your present wife. Yeah. How is the relationship being that you're African American and she's white? I mean, do you get? He's got money. She's a bitch, better play along. You know, like, <laughs> so, no, it's not about the money. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not about the money okay. it's, it's not about the money she's like one of those country girls whatever this and that but um, mm-hmm. like, I, like I said honey you know what I live on the beach in LA it's a better place than in LA because uh, too many superficial people in LA I, I can't stand people in LA and um, you know thank God she's not like that and uh, I got a good one she's a very strong woman right. and, and they've been married for two years yeah she's a very strong woman and it takes a takes a good woman to hold me down Okay, thanks for calling. So, so, um, what if she tipped on the marriage? If she does, you know what? Does that mean divorce? Does infidelity no, mean divorce it, to you? You know what? To me, you know, if I do it, you know, I can't say a damn thing. That's her business. Have you have you been in, unfaithful in the two years you've been married? Absolutely. Yeah. I can't lie about that. Hell yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't gonna never lie about that. I'm not like one of your, you know, all the guys and say you're trying to be all good at two shoes. No, oh. I have. Yeah. Oh. Do, are you, do you ever mess around with black women? I have to get back to that. Um, Since you've been married, I mean, you no, know. No, no, no. I, 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 girls, you know. Tracy like, Bingham, have you ever had her? Ooh, let's don't go there. Oh. Oh. Let's don't go there. Please don't wow. go there with me right now. Tracy Bingham, she's got to be Crazy the most. Tracy Bingham. Mm, she, can we go to another subject? I don't want to go too well. No, I want to talk about her. She is, uh, she's something else. She's something else. You know, she, she's. She good in bed? Uh, I almost had her, but no, I couldn't. She's too dingy. Too dingy. She's too dingy. She's black, but she just woo. She's a little too white in the, in the color. So you like your white women pure white. You don't like black girls that act white. Well, you know what? You know what? It's, it depends on how you how you carry yourself. Mm. You know, I, like I said, I don't I don't care, dude. It's just you know, I just like you to be honest and, mm. and true blue, the straightforward. I don't like all that bull crap. Yeah, you know, I got you. And she's, she's I like, with I it. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're taking phone calls now. We got to go to line number one. Michelle is there. Michelle is on line one. Michelle is on line one for Dennis. Hi, Michelle. You're on the radio. Hi, I'm Wendy. Is Dennis Robin there? Yep, here he is. Okay, you know what, Dennis? You seem like a stand-up kind of guy, and I just wanted to make a comment. And the comment is, is that I understand that you said that the reason why you don't date black women is the fact that, you know, black women have a tendency when you were nothing, they thought you were probably ugly or you didn't yeah. have any money. But the thing about it is, why not take responsibility for yourself? Why does a black woman have to be blamed for the fact that you like white women? Why don't you just say, I like, well, that's what I prefer. That's why I like white women. Why is it that... He took the responsibility, though, earlier. He I said it was his fault. It's, it's, it's my fault. It's my fault. Fault, yeah, that's that. just your thought, but you know what? I, you know, I, it just—it just—it's very disheartening because well, you said that you came from a strong um, black woman, being your wa- your mother, right. and the fact that you have a personal preference—I mean, that's your preference. Well, but you know yeah, what? Yeah. Don't don't use it at the expense of a black woman saying the reason no, no, why you're no, 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 white woman is because you got it wrong. You got black women were this way or that way. You got you got it wrong, honey. You know, that was so hostile. That you know, don't, 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 I'm not hostile about Dennis's preferences. I'm not hostile about anything. You know what? Uh, let me straighten this out for you, Michelle. You know what? If you see any athlete, any athlete, a lot of athletes. We'll talk to a lot of white girls. I'm just letting Hello. you know. I'm just letting you know right now. Like I said, I prefer I, I, the Dennis you know, type because at least you're you know, honest with it. I'm honest with it. You know what? I, I love black women. It's the fact that I've, I've been brought up in a certain situation. Where, in a messed up situation, yeah, that, that's, and that's, that's his. That's his that's, experience. That's my experience. No, no, no. I understand that's his preference. Okay. But you know what? The reality of it is this: is that you know, if the black man, if the black woman doesn't love herself, if the black man doesn't show us respect and love us, then then who will? And the thing about it is, a lot. There's no difference between a white woman. 
woman and a black woman. White woman, black woman want the same. Woman they want. The same thing listen. Black women have. The only thing difference is, is that the black women are honest from the beginning. Okay. If you don't have this, if you don't have that, white women have a tendency to be a little sneaky with their stuff. They wait until they get you. And Hello. then we want the same thing out of life. Thanks, Michelle. All Thank right, you. Right. Let me ask you about your relationship with your daughters or your, your kids. Yes, hold up. Fuck it. on my ass, huh? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. hey, listen. Yeah. I, I didn't understand you at first either. You right. know, I just, you right. know, and then I, I did, I read your first book, right. Bad right. As I Want to Be. Right. I've seen you do interviews and stuff. I'm not a big sports fan, but what I am is as soon as a sports person crosses over to pop culture, now you're in my alley. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and right. you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, like I said, I'm very controversial and uh, a lot of black people. That's what you do. They're going to look at me, oh, screw you, screw you, screw you. Now, you know what? It ain't about that. It's not about that. If I wasn't married, I will date, I'll date black women. Because today, I think I think black women, to me, I think it's, I'm more acceptable to black women now. And uh, You're more I, acceptable it, now. It, yeah, now. Mm -hmm. And back then, I wasn't because I was too leery because all the things that happened to me all those years. Yeah. And, uh, and now, it's more like, you know, I love black women. I love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. They're very beautiful. Yeah. Even you beautiful. Thank you. Yes, you are. Thank you. So, now, your wife, do you have a prenuptial agreement with her? No. Wow, you married her raw dog. Would you marry a black woman raw dog? Absolutely. Because it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, if I if I screw up and she wants to take half my money, she can have it. I don't Something, care. You're not scared to be broke, though. You're not scared. I, I, you're I not scared. I, I, I love people I like that. I like like. I don't care. I don't care because you know what? Money not, doesn't make me. No. Nope, no. Nope. Doesn't make me. You know, sure I make doesn't. myself. Oh my God, am I saying I have something in common with Dennis Rodman? Jeez, Louise. So your your, your kids, you got. All right, we're talking about your your biologicals. I know yeah, you have one four, step. Four. Okay, what's your relationship like with them? I wish I was closer. Yeah. I wish I was closer. I think that the fact that uh, being famous and being my independent, uh, being very independent and strong, I think you know, and they're white, and um, I think the fact that do they look white? Uh, I mean, they're black. Half, half and half, half and half. They got curly hair. They got, you know, real long hair. Yeah. And um, it's very difficult because, you know, it's like, you know, moms send a, a tennis, have a tendency to tell the kids that dad's not this, dad's not that. And I, I don't blame her. You know, I've done a lot of crazy things in my life. And yeah. uh, hopefully that, that my daughter, my kids will understand that the fact that dad is, is crazy, but he, he's a very good dad. Uh, uh, did, does, do any of them date yet? I forgot how we One. Old you. One. Does she date black or white? Uh, both. Yeah. Well, it's very difficult because she has a hard time with people, with kids in school because they tip, they, keep, they, uh, they kid me a lot. Yeah. Your dad's a faggot. Your dad's this. Your dad's that. This, this, that. Yeah. And she's like, you know, it's very difficult to date yeah. guys. Do they live well? Your 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 oldest daughter and the mother. I mean, I know you uh, give money, but I, do they? Uh, you know, they? I think they live fairly well. You know, you give them fifteen thousand a month for fifteen years. I think it's kind of live real well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so all my kids are taken care of real well. The other two, um, are they the same mother? Yeah, same mother. The, excuse me. Uh, the other three, they're the same mother. No, I got three. Three different babies' mothers. Yeah. Um, do you take care of the other babies' mothers Absolutely. equally? Everybody gets like fifteen thousand no, dollars no, a month. No, 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 no. One gets fifteen. One gets six. One gets a lot. A lot more. You know, because I'm married to one, so she has the two little ones, the three and the four. Oh, yeah. Oh, you give your wife an allowance. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. So, I want to get back to the NBA dress code. Um, because I know you. I know that if you were in the NBA, I know how you would be wanting to, you know, get out there with the yeah. suit on or whatever. Yeah. But, but, but what do you feel as an outsider looking in, but you were a part of that organization at one point? I, when, I, when I was uh, playing in the NBA, I was uh, more of a... Um, I'm a cross-dresser. I would dress in uh, somewhat drag. Yeah. You know, I have all my drag queens and stuff like that in the front row. I have all my gay people in the front row. Yes. And people like you said, like, wait a minute. What, what is he doing over there? What is he doing? How you doing? These, these, are, these are my queens here. They're all good. They're all good. They come into big platforms. I'm like, okay. They walk down the thing. I'm like, okay. That's Dennis. So they got used to me. So it's like, you know, when they come down with like uh, Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Oh, hello. Yeah. It's all good, Yeah. Right? yeah. I remember you dressed up as the bride. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was cool. Yes. Terrell Owens, do you think that he's like the Dennis Rodman of the NBA? Or at you, NFL? You, you kind know of, what, sort you know of, what? the way they're treating him? No, I don't think so. When I when I got there, when I kept the cameraman back in the day in Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. I got 11 games, but the deal is still, uh, I never, like I said, I never dest destructed anything in the league. I made money for the league. I made money. Me, Michael Jones, Scotty Pippen, we made money for the league. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, he'll come back stronger than ever. To yeah. almost, he's a good guy. You ever jump in the stands like a Ron Artest and those guys? Did you have, Did you ever have a situation? No, I like embrace that? people. I embrace people. I love the uh, people antagonizing me and stuff. Like I love it. I love it. Yeah. Even today, when I walk out this studio, people say, "You son of a bitch." Okay, and yeah, <laughs> and I love it. I love it. Goose, what do we need? <clears throat> Give me one minute, and then we go back. Okay. Now, here you go. Here you go. 
Um, exactly one month. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk about drugs. <clears throat> yeah. Are you still um, Are you still chiefing? I never. I've never done drugs in my life. I'm, wow. I've never done All drugs in my life. Sober? Never done drugs in my life. Never in my life. And I've always told people, you know what? Shut I can, I can be in Vegas drinking and stuff like that. You could test me any day, any time, any time in the world. Test me anytime. Got to tell you, that makes this wow. one of the scariest men on the planet. All this nuttiness, that, all that nutty, nutty cuckoo that you do, no and, and no drugs? No alcohol. Yeah. But you know what, though? In Vegas, it's more like, uh, that's, that's, that, that is my drug. Alcohol, that's my drug. Alcohol is your drug. Hang on for one second, everybody. Wendy Williams! Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Hey, oh, Dennis Rodman is still with us. Um, we've been talking behind the scenes all along, everybody. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. for the affiliates, sorry. Yeah. Um, but you just came in at a good point because we were just about to talk about the, all the drugs. And it turns out Dennis does no drugs. No drugs at all. Did Never. you ever smoke weed? Never. Never. Not even back in the day? Never. Never. Back when I was uh, growing wow. up in the projects, uh, my mother, my sisters, all uh, the guys in, in, in the area, just come to the house and sell cocaine and stuff like that. I would walk right past the living room, go right to the gym every day. Every day I see, I could see people get shot, killed over drugs. Never. Never. Jeez. That was my choice. That's a good damn choice. That's my choice. It's a good damn choice. Thank are God. you judgmental when some when people are in the room? They pull out the mirror and you know, let Peru loose on it. No, I always, you, I always say, you know what? I'll be the only guy standing. I look at them. It's their business. No, well, you're not standing because you're probably over with the Jägermeister or I something know, like that. Pretty much, right? But I'm just saying, though, you know, they, they, they do what they do. Yeah. I do what I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have racked up your share of um, uh, cop stops. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. Um, there was a time, I think, in the past like three months that you were stopped. Why didn't you stop in the last th three months? I, I was at a, I was doing a board run for the. Uh, it's like it's like a cannibal run. Yes, you are. It was a cannibal run, yeah. and uh, we was uh, had my Lamborghini. Yeah, it was like eighty cars. We ran around uh, United States and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I got stopped three times in one day, yeah. and uh, they pulled me over a couple times, speeding for one hundred twenty miles an hour. So yeah. after we that, when, when the race was over, mm -hmm. three months later, it's on ESPN and. Dennis Rodman got arrested. This oh. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, and this is a traffic ticket. <laughs> and the cops must love stopping me. They figure they, they can it. they can go through the car and they find something. Not like Michael Irvin today. Yeah. Michael Irvin today got that uh, two days ago got pulled over. We didn't even go over the story. Let's talk about it now. So what right. do you know about that? What'd you hear? Um, me and Michael Irvin have been friends for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had trouble back in the day. But uh, very unfortunate that he got stopped two days ago. That's his day. But he have weed in the car. Weed. No, we had the pipe. The pipe. Yeah, the yeah. crack pipe. <laughs> crack pipe. Did, had you ever seen him um, smoke crack? Never. It, uh, but, uh, you know, back in the day, Mike did his little taps. And yeah. Know, yeah. So it wasn't stunning. Probably just... No. Smoking. Who's the best in the league now? Who's the best in the league? Yeah. We talked about... I asked you about rebounders. I don't think I got a I clear... Say, I say who's the best in the league. I think Kobe. Okay. Yeah. Kobe's the best in the league, you know. Is LeBron James... Is he living up to the hype? LeBron's LeBron. Okay. That's how I look at it. I think that... Uh, you know, if you want to be a superstar, you'll be a superstar. Okay. The NBA will make you a superstar. Gotcha. Do you know I saw on TV the other day, you and Carmen Electra are the only um, Mr. and Mrs. mugshots <laughs> in the history of, of uh, right. in recent history of mugshots? Right, right. Yeah, another reason for you to go down in history. Right. Well, I think I've asked you, like, everything that I wanted well, to I, talk to you about. Just on your show, on your show, I'll give you a special show. How about that? Okay. When you do a VH1, I'll give you a special show. How about that? You'll come on my show? Well, we'll have to do something fun that oh, day. Oh, honey, you know, I'm all about fun. I'm all about fun. You know what? As long as your husband don't, you know. No. I mean, he, if he's cool about it, I, I'll make it fun. Oh, boy. Okay. I'll we, make it fun. We're not swingers. I didn't say you're swingers. I said as long as he's cool about it, it's all good. You got a nice show here in New York. It's all good, baby. I heard you number one in, in, you know, in the city. Yeah. And, uh, and in Philly. Congratulations. And in South and, Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, yeah. In Louisiana. And two, oh, you two know what? Let's don't go far, okay? All right, anyway. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, all right, it's all good, but I know, I know, I know you're big, baby. But uh, anyway, we'll have fun on your show. I'll Did anybody you. warn you not to come here? 
Why would they? Why Why would somebody yeah. warn Dennis Rodman not to come see me? You know what? I would. I like to take your gay person over there to some place and uh, show him a good time. You like Artie? <laughs> I, I would. I would take him somewhere. He's like, ooh, I didn't know this happens. Artie's a foot fetish. Do you, are you a foot fetish person? Do you like girls' feet and I stuff? Would, I would show Artie. That's his name, right? Artie, mm-hmm. Artie, I'm going to tell you something. Have you seen a guy? Wow. Wow. What is that, 18 no, 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 inches? I, I, I'm just saying, have you ever seen that? Never. I can show you that if you want. I can show you, you that. You will go there tonight, Art. I, I will show, show you that. I will show you that. Can I've, can I've can seen run. guys do this right here, dude, from here. Like this. Get like fisted this. in the behind? Like that. Like that. Uh, I'll show you that. I'll show you that. <laughs> here in New York. Chicago, New York, Miami, L.A. I'll show you in the world. And you do Germany. All- no, I just, I just watch it. No, but I'm saying it's, uh, this is the kind of fun Dennis Rodman likes to have. No, you know, I've, I've done everything in the world. I've done everything in the world besides, you know, be, be with a, uh, a guy. What's the oldest woman you've been with? The oldest. Like, have you ever been with her? My wife. She's 38. Oh, well, then you haven't done everything. You haven't experienced 58 or 78. No, and I've Have you ever that. been punked? I don't like that show. Punked? Eh, the, the jokes. Oh, they won't even do me because they know I won't, you know, whatever. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it wouldn't shock me. But Ari, right, hey, bro, if you want that, I'll show it to you. <laughs> all right, I'm if gonna, you want that, I'll show it to I'll, you, I'll, right? I'll watch with you. Uh, I'll show it. I'll show it to you. Like, God, I'm right. It's so true. why'd you write this second book? Who came to you? It's the third book. Is it your third? Yeah. The motorcycle book was your first? Motorcycle, Walk on the Wide Side was the second, and this. You, I should be dead. You like the so and and all these books are about your life. Yeah, the, all various aspects of your life. You get yeah. the Grim Reaper over you, and you. I'm doing. I'm doing a um, next next time. I'm doing a uh, tabletop book, all naked. All tabletop. Nude. Oh yeah, love that. All love nude. that idea. First sports guy to ever do it. I love that idea. Oh yeah, with all my friends. <laughs> does Madonna? Do you think regret having sex with you? I don't think she does. I heard that she, uh, she, when she was ovulating, what is that when you're producing the eggs? Ovulating. ovulating. You were in Vegas, and she hopped a flight from New York to Vegas to be with you. Yeah. Or it was something like that. Yeah, she wanted me to come. I dropped my chips. I left them there. Went and screwed her. Done. Oh, love it. <laughs> Done. That was it. I went back to Vegas. So that means that you were just having um, unprotected sex with her. Like, it wasn't a thing. Absolutely. Do you have unprotected sex with your jumbos? Wait, hold on a second. Do you have unprotected sex um, frequently? I mean, do you have a theory on AIDS that you'd like to share with the rest of us? No, you know what? I'm very selective. I'm very selective. And I understand that, you know, you, I can be in one situation, in another situation, but yeah. I'm very selective. I don't go screw any whore yeah. in a strip on this and that. I know who I'm screwing. Right, right, All right? right. I've checked it out. D- have you ever uh, gotten an STD that you needed some quick penicillin for? Well, for like this, honey. You can take a test right now and right. you can put on your show. I do it on your show. How about that? I do it on your show. You oh, my VH1 test. show. I'm doing your show. You take a test anytime, and you, and you tell your listeners anything you want. How about that? Because I'm looking at his lips, Art. The first thing I look for, you know, those herpy bumps. Jenny McCarthy oh, no. came up in here. I don't oh, know what the no. hell she had living on her lip. Oh, I was oh, like, oh, damn, oh, and she's oh, a woman. I almost, Woo! I, I almost screwed up. I'm sorry. Um, I almost got her. All right. Hey, yeah, you know, wow. I put her husband in the front seat. I was in the back seat. Was almost. Uh, she's divorcing him now. No, no, no. Not him. The other guy. Wow. The old agent. Back in the day. Wow. Did he? Do you think he realized what was going on in the back seat? Oh, absolutely. That's why he took her out. Wow. Now, I've done it so much, so much with a lot of people. I haven't written in my books. Yeah. You know, when I tell all book before I die, you you know. So when do you write that? When you're on your death spec? Well, that's pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you'd lose friends that you probably really don't even care you have as long as you got your agent and, you know, this, and a couple. This, of, these books are all about having fun. Yeah, you know, entertaining and stuff like that. We talked about it over years and stuff like that, but people want to listen to it and read it. It's all good. It's very interesting. Well, I want you to sign my copy. I will. Because I definitely want to read this. It's Dennis Rodman, everybody. You've given good talk. Worm. I'm worm. A worm, and you know what? You called here about six months ago. I yes, forgot I what I was talking about. You talk about the Knicks and stuff like that. And what did I say? You talk about the Knicks and Isaiah. Mm-hmm. You come play for the Knicks and stuff like that. I said, you know what? The Knicks, uh, they played Larry Brown $50 million for five years or whatever. I said, she should get some of that money back. That's bullshit. Mm. You know, that's bull crap, you know. And uh, and the team that they got right now is kind of like, kind of weak. But mm. uh, like I said, if you bring me here, you know, and Isaiah, you know. You, How uh, you doing? You know, you know. Has Isaiah ever hit on you? No, Isaiah. Isaiah All no. right. No, no, there's no, this Isaiah. He just, he's a chicken shit. Ooh. Sorry. Excuse me? It's the I'm sorry. He's a chicken <laughs> shit. I don't care. <laughs> and I'm going to game Wednesday, so sitting on the front row. I'll be right there. <laughs> well, then, when you see Isaiah, tell him I said, how you doing? I will. <laughs> Everybody, remember these words. Don't 
follow a path, blaze a trail. That's right. It's the last page of the Dennis Rodman book. It's That's called right. I Should Be Dead By Now. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dennis, All for right, coming man. in. Cool, baby. Much love. All right, everybody. Cool, keep baby. it where you got, got it. Once he leaves, we can talk about him. <laughs> and we can talk about the other celebrities, too. Yeah, Ryan yeah. Seacrest, Prince, Mariah Carey, Little Kim. It's all coming up. <sighs> Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get your book. That book is fire! <laughs> yeah, honey, you did it. I can't. What's up? This is Jack A. Harry. What's up? This is your fabulous girl, Takara. What's up? This is Dr. Ian Smith, and you're listening to the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Everybody, here we are. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. If you're just turning on the show, welcome. How you doing? Dennis Rodman already left. Paige Kennedy from Desperate Housewives, you know, the former black man who lived in the basement. Um, apparently, he was at a party the other night for Usher's publicist, Tamar uh, Judah. And um, the place was Marquee, where the party was going on. And Paige was apparently telling Tamar, the birthday girl, it doesn't say it was her birthday. Oh, just her party. The party girl that he didn't have a hotel room and asked her if she if he could crash with her. And then he said that it would be a night that she wouldn't forget. She said no. And since then, he's been texting her like crazy, offering to fly her to L.A. Um, she's managing to resist, they say. Well, I was reading last week that he is hung like a horse. And apparently that was his bragging rights for flashing, you know, all around the set that he had something that was just amazing, you know, for, for women to see. And, and he flashed himself right out of a job. Dumb ass. Dumb ass. They got a whole second uh, show out of that marrying Peter Brady show. Now they're going to show the marriage in its first year. Or in the first few months. The Surreal Life, then they did My Fair Brady, and now Christopher Knight and um, Adrian Carey from America's Next Top Model return with a second season of My Fair Brady. That was just announced last week. And um, apparently they're madly in love. They have their individual quirks and flaws, but they they embrace them. And <laughs> she's very annoying, and, and he's... Oh, gosh. He's 48, and she's 23, and there's another show for you to enjoy. Courtesy of VH1. <laughs> Did you hear the word about uh, Whoopi Goldberg? She's not as old as we all thought we were, she was. How old did you think Whoopi was? I thought Whoopi was like 55. Yeah. How old did you think she was, Art? 40. 40? Yeah. Like 40, 42, something like that. Shut up. Anyway. Well, you asked me. What is the matter with you? Well, you asked me a question. You tell me to shut up. You asked me a question. You didn't give a serious answer, I though. I didn't give a serious answer. I thought she was like 40, 42. So then how old would she have been when she did a color purple? I don't know. They had makeup on her. She, they made her look older. I don't know. Anyway, everybody, uh, Whoopi apparently had to age up to get hired. She added six years to her age at the beginning of her career so that she'd get acting jobs. They always told her that she looked really young and she was like, you know, no, but I can do it. And then she would add years to her age. So she added four years and um, something about her passport. You know, she, she that is like the only thing that she didn't, you know, end up changing, you know, as absolute proof. And she was born in 1955 and she's, um, she just celebrated her 50th birthday earlier this month. So happy 50th birthday, Whoopi. Yeah, I believe the whole age up thing. I thought she was older than that. Well, good for you. Um, Buster Rhyme got rid of his dreadlocks. Do you guys want to talk on the phone? Is, is Are people calling on the phone? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would love to just pick up the calls blindly. He uh, He's had them for 15 years, blah, blah, blah. So now he's got a Caesar. Great. How you doing? Who's on the phone? Hey, Wendy. Hi. 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 Wendy, I thought Dennis Rodman was good. I liked him. I mean, you know, you don't have to... What, li what line is this that you just press? Okay, so this is Vicky. Huh, Vicky? Wendy, yeah, I found his honesty refreshing. Yeah. At least he's not one of these, like, undercover how you doing. Right. I found it refreshing also. He's not undercover how you doing. He's not, you know, I mean, even as a black woman, you know, to each his own. If, if you don't want us, fine. If But I understand what he's saying. But, you know, it doesn't mean you have to agree with him. But, I mean, I found him as refreshing as as, as Eric Benet. 
I did too because he was honest. Because I wanted to hate on Eric Benet too. I, I couldn't hate on him. I couldn't. Yeah. I can't hate on Dennis. Yeah, I like. But him. he just like they just admitted exactly what their deal was, and yeah. I was like, that's fine. Yeah. And then when the other black lady like called to hate on him, I was like, don't hate on him. He was not the finest cat around, and his ass was broke. I wouldn't have been trying to get with him either. There are a lot of people who know exactly what he was saying, and you know, and not only that, but he wasn't chief. And remember how important that was when we were fifteen? Yeah, or, or some of us. I'm sorry. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You gotta yeah, be up to I something. Do. I mean, you know, he wasn't doing anything. So I yeah. un- I understand. I liked him. Thanks for calling, Vicky. Yeah, I'm from Jersey too. I love you so much, Wendy. I listen to you all the time. Thank you. All right, bye, bye. Vicky. Let's go to line number two. Taylor's there. He wants to no, come. No, Taylor. Taylor hung up. All right. Well, then line number three. Jason. Oh, Jason. Yeah, I called your wife earlier. Hey, thank you, Wendy. Yeah. I really appreciate that. You're welcome, she Jason. So geek out. He called me at work. Amen. When you left the message. Yeah, I left him. I left her a message. Jason got through last week and asked me to give his wife a call. And you know, I was like, mm, yeah, whatever. We'll put you on hold. We'll take down the telephone number. And so today, when I came in and started my paperwork for the show, I did leave the number sitting at the top of my pile. And so I said, let me call Jason's wife. I called her and left her a message. Appreciate it. Wendy. Yeah, she was. On, she was on the other line. Was that? She was on the other line. I couldn't talk to her. Yeah, yeah. All right, no, Jason. I- oh. The school she worked at the phone system really sucks. Oh, oh. All right, Jason. Well, thanks for calling. We'll go to line number four. Teresa's there. Hey, Teresa. What's going on? Hi, Wendy. You're this th- is Teresa. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Uh, hanging in there, still trying to... I'm calling this number that I have for the Dons and Divas, but it's no answering machine or nothing picking up. Now, are you calling 212-447-5199? Right. Okay. Uh, shout out to you girls back there in the pink room. Oh, uh, Hello. Can somebody, all right, give them like 15 minutes to get Jim Wiener, who will go in the office and try to assess what this problem is. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I'll still keep trying. In the meantime, you can always email Dons and... Uh, Dons and Divas 2005 Yahoo.com, right? Exactly. Okay, that's going to be my next move. Yeah. I know I'm not going to win on the radio. I- I'll still try, though. Email email your um, your email information and blah, 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 blah. And, and tickets will be available, like, like really, really soon. As a matter of fact, I got a bunch of telephone numbers and stuff I wanted to give out to people. But um, give me a moment on that, okay? Okay, right, so th- I'll keep trying. Love th- you. Love you, too. Thanks for calling, okay, Teresa. bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, um... I mean, you know, it's good. I'm glad that, you know, Busta cut his dreads off because he was really straining to keep some semblance of a hairline going. So by cutting him off, he's kind of freed the tension. No, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I mean, he would he would have more edging and more Caesar look going on in the front because he knew there was tension there also. So it's just best just to, you know, cut it off. That's great. He says it has nothing to do with a new stage in life or anything like that. He's got some sort of um, CD coming out in 2006 and so you know he wants a different look I hear that this just in Raymond Benzino Scott embattled co-owner of the source magazine has been charged by the United States Attorney's Office in Massachusetts with failing to file tax returns in 1999 and 2000 Benzino faces a federal misdemeanor charge for not reporting an estimated $1.5 million in income from 1999 to 2000. He can take care of that, though. I mean, this is just a little oversight. There was an extensive investigation into this matter, according to the Boston Herald. We took a sweeping look at this individual. We were aware of the allegations of murder and everything else. This is what we came up with. So that's good. Hey, you know, somebody takes a fine tooth comb through your life. They they don't find out anything. They find out you owe a few dollars in taxes. All right. This is more than a few dollars. But, you know, Benzino can gather this money and pay the taxes and make this all go away. You know, he co-founded the almighty RSO crew back there in, in Boston and stuff. Anyway, uh, he was arraigned and freed on $10,000 unsecured bond. What does that mean? Unsecured bond. Nobody put their house up. What does that mean? What, Art, do you know what that means? Unsecured bond? Hmm. Let's, um, 
go to line number seven. Tequila? Hello? This is some kind of special spelling of your name. T-E-K-E-L-A-H. But I knew exactly what it was, Tequila. Hey, Tequila. Hi, so, so I'm doing good. Okay, so you're 26 years old. Now, how can I help you with your girlfriend? Okay. A girlfriend, how you doing? I can't tell her name because her man be listening to this show all the time. Okay. And I think they're together right now. Let me find out. I was a working mind in my business this Wednesday like I always do. And this chick done called me and told me what she did today. Why did she have a more productive morning than I did? Girl got a phone call from some guy off the internet. Off the internet, Miss Wendy. And then she went to his job. He went to some, some hospital as an orderly. Tell me why they got down and dirty in the bathroom. And then they proceeded to go to a big room in the hospital. And then the bitch had the nurse to call me and ask me if she was a jump off. Hello? So would you tell? So would you tell her? Of course. And then she has. Hello, are you stupid. And then she's t- is telling me, "Well, I don't know what I why I did." It. And she has a man. And what if my man find out? I'm like, Trent, you should have thought about that before you went to the hospital. Okay? Yeah. Some people. Okay? Some people aren't built for the sneaky. But, I mean, because if you like go down with the get down, I mean, you need to just keep it together. Okay? Yeah. Just you know, make your story. I, I, I listen to you, Miss Wendy. I hatch a plan. If I'm doing cut game, I'm gonna hatch a plan. Hatch a plan. That's right. She listened to me, and then she called me for advice. I told her to get a job, okay? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Thank okay. you. Bye, Tequila. Bye, Miss Wendy. Bye. All right, let's go to line number six. Summer is 32 and needs advice about a threesome. Uh, is this a threesome threesome or a friendship involving three people? Summer. Hello? Hi, is this okay. Summer? No, this is Raven. Oh, hi, Raven. How, How you doing? doing? All right. Listen, mm-hmm. I, I, did you um, ask any... I wanted to know if um, Dennis Rodman... Do you think he knows Nicole? Who's Nicole? You mean, Chicago. You mean, How are you doing? Oh, uh-uh. Mm-mm. You sure? I don't think that... I think that Dennis would admit it. If he was into transsexuals, trans... He said, he said he never done anything with men. She's a woman who hasn't had her thing removed. He didn't say he never done anything with the transsexual. You're right. I didn't get that deep into it. Mm. Damn, damn, damn. I love damn, you, Wendy. Damn, I'm damn. glad you're back. Oh, well, thank what you, Raven. I do without you? Thank you, Raven. I love you, baby. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Um, Nicole Ritchie was on Larry King on November 15th, and I missed it, but they said Ryan Seacrest did a really good job with the interview. Old oh, Man King, I guess, you know, he probably needs, like, backup when, you know, younger people come in. And younger people, I guess, for whatever, are relevant. I don't know that Nicole Richie is, but, you know, some of the other ones. Jeez, the Seacrest gets all the break. That's what it's like to be a white man in America, boy. He's doing American Top 40. He's American Top He's the heir to the Casey Kasem. He has his talk show. It sucks. He's off. He's, you know, he just uses the right hair moves. He's got the right connections, and it starts with the complexion. Jeez. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Congratulations, Seacrest. In. <laughs> she said she wants five kids. I didn't actually see this Larry King, but I have the cliff notes. She said she wants five kids with DJ AM. Jessica and Nick are finished. I mean, do we really even have to talk about that? Ugh. I mean, I hate to see another, you know, marriage, whether it's Hollywood or not. And I do believe that they got married for the right reasons. I just think that, you know, all the Hollywood, the you know, all the cameras and stuff, her getting married before she can sell her oats. Girls, she's a perfect living example. I mean, if she just had a little bit of that Daisy Duke money prior to getting married, a little bit of that freedom would drop it like it's hot as opposed to, you know, being under the chastity of, of her mother and father. You know, she went right from her mother and father right to Nick. To be in a hot behind who's paying her mother and father. Now she can tell them what? You know, so, I mean, you know, men and women, people need to get loose before, you know, I don't want to say laying down to die and make marriage seem like it's terrible because it's not. It is what you make it. But damn, damn, damn. Live. 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 Men and women. Live. Live. 46 years old. I haven't had any in three years. My wife cut me off three years ago because of her serious mental deficiencies, and I've still been a faithful husband. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Did you hear how we've judged up the party? Well, not only do we have spectacular buffet, and of course the spectacular 
um, WBLS air personalities, and of course you, but we've just added Cameo. Mm-hmm. So it's Jaheem, Donnell Jones, and Cameo. Oh, the surprises keep coming. That's our BLS Christmas party with a purpose. Get your tickets. Ticketmaster, 212-307-7171. December 17th, we'll see you at the Marriott. This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by MasterCard. And I want to remind you, this coming Saturday is December 3rd. And I'm going to be one of the hosts for the big Move Against AIDS Dance-a-thon at Manhattan Center, 311 West 34th Street. DJ Beverly Bond will be putting it down along with Tony Touch, Junior Vasquez, and many more DJs. After all, this is a 24-hour dance-a-thon, so, you know, they're going to need a lot of DJs. Would you like to register and be a part? 212 807 Nine two five five eight zero seven nine two five five. It's the move against AIDS to benefit the the gay men's health crisis and the fight against AIDS. And um, I'm going to be there uh, about seven o'clock on Saturday night, and I should be there from like seven to nine, something like that. You know, loosely, you know, a loose seven, a loose nine. So I'll see you at Manhattan Center this coming Saturday night. And how you doing in advance? I look forward to it. I've been knowing I was going to be doing that for about two months now, boy. You can wear your leotards. Yeah, I can wear, I can, you know, wear what I want. Be free. So, um, who wants to see art at Newark Symphony Hall on Saturday, December 10th? He's going to be in this play. Um, who's going to save me? It's time to tell your secret. It's a true story. Um... Well, they said it was a true story in the commercial. They said it's a true story, a, a thought-provoking true story that'll make you laugh and cry, featuring art. So it's Saturday, December 10th. If you'd like to go, call the number 10 on the phones right now. Wins those passes, 866-GET-WENDY. Dial carefully and good luck. Um, do I do Benjamin Rugg at home? Yes. Okay. And the one on top, too. Oh, this hour of the show is also brought to you by Affinity Health Plan. All right. So, Stephanie Cohen, everyone, invites you to stop by Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Stephanie and her husband, Ben, own this store. It is a phenomenal place to get furniture and flooring. Um, they also have, and I love this, they have the interior design service. <clears throat> That's for, you know, if you're not really creative yourself, but you kind of have an idea, but maybe you don't know. Oh, hell, let me just call an expert. They're the experts. They got all the furniture there, contemporary, classic, traditional. And they've got all the rugs, small, medium, humongous, <laughs> and everything in between. If there's a color of purple that you need to match up, you talk to Tom. He's the rugologist. Tom will throw a little spank on a rug. Next thing you know, pow, pow. Wow, now this is what I wanted. 20 Meadowlands Parkway. The telephone number is 201-617-9000. I'm not just talking to you about it. I'm also a customer of the store. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. I'm telling you, they're fantastic. The parking is easy. It's convenient to get to. 20 Meadowlands Parkway in the legendary um, warehouse Designer warehouse, you know, where Gucci is and everything over there in Secaucus. Oh, please. Secaucus, New Jersey. Legendary. 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Benjamin Rugg and Home Furniture. And go on their website, stephaniecohen.com. That's a good one to go to. I get so many telephone numbers and all like that for um, for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. I can just start with Harlem. How about that? Because now people are starting to get their tickets in. You know how you know you can go over and and pick up your tickets here or pick your pick up your tickets there. All right. Well, the people who are now holding tickets are um, are in line. Special shout out to Ron. Hey, Ron at Hillside Auto Spa in Queens. He's got tickets over there at his business for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Seven one eight five two three two three zero nine. And I can tell you in Harlem, have you ever heard of Black Star? Do you know who Black Star is in Harlem? All right. Well, Black Star's got tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Demetrio Furs, what a great look. Thank you for writing. This is the sixth Dons and Divas Demetrio Furs been with. And Martel X and O. Wonderful. That's the new heading. 
Demetrio Furs and Martel XNO present yes. the Wendy Williams Dons and Divas Extravaganza. That's, that's how it's going to be said. Ah, fabulous. Here's Black Star's number in Harlem. 212-254-6244. We got a real sneaky and cryptic-like, too, the location. You're going to get your tickets. It's not Location's not going to be on the ticket. You get a telephone number. You can call that number like 10 days before the affair and find out, you know, the party's at, say, Wendy's house or something like that. You know what I mean? It's hot. A little cryptic. Razak's another proud sponsor. He's got a contest going on. Yeah, I know. He's got $500 a piece for the best dress Don and Diva. So he's a thousand bucks. The judges will be looking throughout the party. And so if you're dancing and you get a tap on your shoulder and somebody says, come over here. I just. I just want Art to look at your outfit or whatever, you know. You could win $500 right there at the party. And you won't even spend it at the party. It's five hours of open damn bar. I mean, you know what I mean? Exactly. Wow. So I can give you the web address again. I'll give you um, Ron. And I have all the boroughs covered, but I'm just trying to give you the preliminaries right now. You can get at the Heat in Montclair, New Jersey, though. You can get at Race and Qua. Everybody knows them. They're legendary in Newark at 973-418-3019. You're in New Jersey. A lot going on. I got to give Philly and Delaware their telephone numbers. Connecticut's been calling real heavy, too. Probably need to continue with the break. Peace, Connecticut. Hey, look, look, let me give you your telephone number now. Why not? 203-985-3233. 203-985-3232. That's for you, Connecticut. A lot going on. Do we have time to talk to anybody on the telephone? Sure. Well, Tamar is on line 5, 37. She wants to know if I saw Superhead on Tyra Banks. No, I didn't see. How was it? Wendy? Yes? Hi. You talk, you talk about Superhead on Tyra Banks? Yes, you talk about it. How was it? How was it? Actually, it was pretty good. I mean, she is really hustling this good girl look. I mean, wow. Yeah. I was expecting something different. She looked so clean, so dignified, and she had the nerve to have on glasses. The what? But- Yes. I mean, really. I, I, I mean, I, I read the book, and I'm like, oh, I, it just, it just didn't go with that look that she has now. And I was like, look at her. Wow. Cool. Wow. She looks pretty good. Did pretty it clean, make no cleavage, no nothing? You know. Wow. Like, okay. Can't hate her. <laughs> wow. Good for her. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, Wendy, let me ask you a question about this um, Dons and Divas. I just heard you talk about the dress thing because I am going. Okay. Are they looking for something like unique or is it just, you know, how you look in the outfit? I mean, how do you win that? Well, you know what? I got to say, because it's the all black affair. So you remember, mm-hmm. it's difficult to stand out in black. But, Absolutely. But it could be the cut or the way your your body is working it or, wow, how unique. She's not wearing tuxedo pants. She's wearing tuxedo hot pants, <laughs> for instance, without the jacket. Instead, she's got on the vest. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. And, and her boobs are pushed all up. And it doesn't. And she looks cute in that outfit. Look at her shoes. She's not. She's wearing spats, for God. Exactly. She's for spectators. It's like hard to stand out with black. But it like is. you said, you know, it, it's true. I guess it depends how you work. It's yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, I hope to see you there, Wendy. Thank you, Tamar. Hi, Kilo. That's my niece in Maryland. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Bye, tomorrow. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. I'm going to go to line number two. No. Oh, line two hung up? Mm-hmm. Well, that was Lisa. She wanted to ask about a colon cleanse. All right. Well, look, we can continue on then. Um, and we're gearing up for the bonus hour, by the way, at the top of the hour, right here on the Wendy Williams Experience. Keep it where you got it, good people. It's your radio station. The people's choice. 107.5 WBLF. Today's R&B and classic soul. 107.5 WBLS. Said I got raped in jail. Bitch, that we paid as a payback. You should get when you win. And I'm breaking back on the neck. Down your throat. Anybody ever see Wendy Williams fat ass? I'm about to put a twenty thousand dollar hit through Jenny Craig to come find your ass and put you in a fat farm. Thug like Outlaw Westside. 
This is Tupac, so you know who said it. Experience, experience, experience. All right, we're about to get out of here, everybody. I would like to thank my special guest that came in today, Dennis Rodman. The Worm has a new book out. It's called I Should Be Dead By Now. This is his third book. And he was as bad as he wanted to be in here on our talk, on our chat back. Actually, I, find, I found him to be, you know, just, a, you know, a regular nice guy. I don't know. You know, the image is so larger than life that you expect. First of all, I expected this huge, tall Shaquille O'Neal of a of a man only because his his the legend is so large and I'm not even talking about the basketball you know I don't even follow sports but um I liked him I liked him so when we get back up with production with the uh fire show for VH1 he's going to be my guest and we'll do something interesting during our interview time and you know thanks Dennis thanks for coming by to the black girl show we talked about that too <laughs> Um, also, don't forget you can visit my website at thewendywilliamsexperience.com and answer today's people poll question. From Wednesday, because we haven't been to work since Wednesday, it was, do you visit your dentist at least once a year? 80% of you think God said yes, and 20% of you said no. Um, the new question is, is your holiday budget over $1,500 for gifts? That doesn't include, you know, how you're decorating your house and the food that you're buying or holiday travel. I'm talking about for gifts. Is your budget over $15,000 for gifts? Okay, you can go to the wendywilliamsexperience.com. Eva, the diva from America's Next Top Model, who's with um, the, the um, actor Henry, I forgot his last name now. Um, they're supposedly engaged, but she's going to turn 21 tomorrow, and she's going to have a big birthday party in New York. And um, everybody's going to be there. And the gift that she's going to be getting that she's really looking forward to is apparently this life-side portrait of herself posing as Josephine Baker, you know, with all the bananas around her waist and stuff. Um, the man who is doing this portrait, his name is Alvaro. And Alvaro has done some over-the-top portraits from and been commissioned by some fabulous people, including Mariah Carey, Iman, and Denise Rich. And I happened to have an Alvaro portrait in my pink room. <clears throat> he did a really fabulous portrait. You know, Goose, that's the one where I'm sitting on the chair in the evening gown with the nice cleavage in my hands and, you know, everything going on. Alvaro is fabulous. And happy birthday in advance, um, Eva. Eva the diva. So Prince was partying in Hollywood, apparently. It was at this place called the Spider Club. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning um, on November 12th. And they say he took one look at all the blonde women dancing and he huffed to a friend of his, where are all the black people? <laughs> Prince was asking, where are all the blackies? Do you know that group Poison? Because if you know the group Poison, then you know who Brett Michaels is. All right. Even if you don't follow Poison, but you follow pop culture, you know, um, he had the porn tape with Pam Anderson that almost got out. And, you know, he and Pam had a very tumultuous relationship. He always wore, wore headbands. OK, well, he literally dodged a bullet escaping injury after someone fired a single shot into his tour bus last Monday night. Well, it was a luxury coach, and the incident took place outside of this place called the Rumble Seat Bar in Massachusetts. He was there to do a performance, and he wasn't hit, but um, he was, like, by the bullet, but he was struck in the face by a flying piece of glass. He was released by the hospital, and um, they say it was just one of those... Things that happens, it, they don't call it a random drive-by, though. You know, haters see the you know the luxurious coach parked outside, and the shot was fired directly into the living quarters of the bus. They say throughout his career, Brett Michaels has been the target of numerous death threats investigated by the FBI. So the cops, you know, swarmed on the bus, and he ended up doing the performance. It's the guitarist C.C. DeVille that's got the voice like this. He was sentenced to 80 days in jail after pleading no contest to um, driving under the influence. But that happened last month. 
apparently he wasn't a part of this performance because 80 Days is not up. So he spent his, Brett Michaels, or excuse me, um, CeCe DeVille did, spent his um, Thanksgiving in jail. So, you know, this is left over from Little Kim on, on Wednesday, I was going to tell you. Little Kim um, is dealing with, you know, another legal situation while she's behind bars. This really has nothing to do with her. Apparently, um, a member of the Junior Mafia's uh, Junior Mafia has named her in his new lawsuit. His name is Michael Goody, and he's claiming that Kim ignored a civil suit, which um, was an offshoot of the shooting that happened in 2001. Inside of a, a, a deli in Fort Greene. Remember that? C's told the story when he came up here. You know, apparently there was loud talking. And um, and Junior Mafia didn't like they were talking so loud and whatnot. C's and, and Souf and Damian Butler and Antoine Spain. They were among the Junior Mafia people who were in there. Fire was opened. And um, Damian Butler... And Souf Jackson have since served their time for the incident. And Kim's lawyer, Mel Sachs, said she wasn't involved. She's not even aware of the incident. Well, don't lie. She was aware of the incident. We, were, we all became aware of it after it happened. But no, she wasn't there. I think they used her car or something like that. That was when all the guys were living, you know, in the house. And, you know, the keys would just be sitting around, you know, grab a car, go out, you know, whatever. But Michael Goody has... Uh, I guess that was the guy who was doing the loud talking in the deli. He's named Kim in his lawsuit. Well, can we talk to Sean real quick? Oh, uh, Shaw is on line one. Shaw is 22. Apparently, there's some kind of shenanigans going on over at the post office. Something about a supervisor got caught giving someone a professional. Do I have that right? Yes, Wendy. Wow. So, I work in the post office on 33rd and 8th, and the supervisor got And the supervisor's a man or a woman? A woman. Mm, and so now what happens when a supervisor gets caught like that? Do they get fired, reprimanded? Or nothing just... happened to her. Well, she got caught again. That's what happened. Oh, she's been caught before? Yeah. Is this a married supervisor? Yeah. Mmm. The guy that she got caught. Oh, oh, okay. He just wanted to call and drop it and hang up. <laughs> oh, I love to always end the show on a positive note. There you go. All right, everybody. I love you for being here today. If you have time in your schedule, please uh, come back tomorrow. We're here same time, same place. Most days. Monday through Friday, we are. <laughs> All right. I love you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. He's part of me, boy. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. Keep it where you got it. Keep it where you got it. Coming up today on the bonus hour, I've got passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Plus, I wanted to talk with you about Heavy D. Um, Isaac Mizrahi's got his top 10 fabulous gift ideas for the holidays. If you still want to talk about Thanksgiving, we can. I'm sure a lot of stuff, you know, happened around you all's table. If you want to talk about it. I don't know. I'm not going to pressure you. <clears throat> More information about the Dons and Divas, though, plus those tickets. And um, hmm, your telephone calls, 866-GET-WENDY. The bonus hour is next of the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WVLS. It's Wendy, man. Wendy Williams and Whitney Houston. Watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you. Watch what the f*** you say. Wendy Williams and Mariah Carey. So how's your love life going? I decided that we don't talk about that anymore. Well, I understand that, but I do have to tell <laughs> you. This is the Wendy Williams show. Exactly. Wendy Williams and John Witherspoon. We know John Witherspoon, everybody, of course, from the... Bang, 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 bang. Wendy Williams and Larry Blackman. You look fabulous. Thank you, love. The man behind the production of Bobby Brown's first solo CD. That's right. I produced his first Everything. record and uh, directed his first video. Now we see where Bobby gets it. Miss a day. Miss a lot. The Wendy Williams Experience. Afternoons. Talks with New York Radio DJ Wendy Williams.
Earlier this year on Wendy Williams' New York Radio Show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy's guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She's made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord. Have I really this? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. Ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Uh-huh. I'm just sitting here checking up my man Harlan Coben's book. You know Harlan Coben. He's got this book called The Innocent. I met him um, several weeks ago when we had that private book dinner. Remember I was telling you only like 20 authors were there and Judy Bloom was one of them and I was like peeing in my pants like Judy Bloom, Judy Bloom. You know, Mary Higgins Clark. Harlan sat across from me. He and his lovely wife. They live in Jersey too. Hmm. Last year it was Harlan Coben and um, Mary Higgins Clark who were invited, invited to um, to go to Berlin. I was telling you the, the Bertelsmann family, they own like Sony and, and Random House, which Random House is double day. It's like a whole bunch of things underneath the Random House umbrella. Anyway, the Bertelsmann, they're that family. They're from Germany. And so at the, at the end of every year, they, like rich people do, they summon their their top 500 executives from all around the world for like a you know a year end you know series of parties and meetings and so on and so forth and at these you know at those summonses uh they they also introduce you know these 500 executives and the Bertelsmans themselves get to meet you know their big cash cows so last year like Harlan Coben was there you know, he's uh, Dutton, which is, you know, all under the same. And uh, Mary Higgins Clark, who's part of the same family. The, there's the book people. They only take two bookies every year from the United States. So this year, I'm one of the bookies. They specified they wanted black. I like when people talk black, white. Just, just real clear cut. Yeah, well, you know, real clear cut. Just so that we're, you know, nothing is, you know... They've never, of all the great black authors, it's still, I pinch myself, I'm like, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Oh, speaking of that, I got a book to give. Nobody hears you! <laughs> what? I said, speaking of books, I have a book to give you. Okay. Called Inside the NFL. Oh. Inside the Negroes of Foolish League. Uh, is that what, that's what they call it? That's the subtitle? Who wrote it? One of the wives? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll give it to you before you leave. Mm. A white wife? No, black white. Oh. But it's about black football players that marry white wives once they get on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need that. Yeah, I, def I definitely need that. I got it in the back of me, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they never brought black, you know, from the writing world over there. They're sure they want black. I don't know how my name got mixed up and everything. All I know is I checked over, check, looked for my pa passport this weekend. I was like, hmm, because we got the tickets and everything. I'm leaving. It's a whole week. By the way, the best of shows. The whole week of best of shows. When? It's Monday through Friday. <laughs> I, I leave next Monday, the 12th. Next Monday? The mo Monday after the 12th. Monday through Friday, yup, get to work. You're, you're eating you're vinegar <laughs> chips like <laughs> like you don't have anything to do. Better get it cracking. And we come back on Friday the 16th. Harlan was telling me, he's like, Wendy, look, let me tell you something. You are going to have the best time. And when I got back, I got the word. His book is translated in like 30 countries around the world. Like it wasn't at that time. Like like going here can really be your next level thing. You might not see it right here in your own backyard of, you know, New Jersey, whatever. But but you'll be felt, you know, worldwide. Mm. 
what do they eat in Germany? Bratwurst and all that. Food is not that good. That real, you know, food that lands on your hips. <laughs> you know, which please, I just got rid of that with Thanksgiving. Got my colonic all lined up for Wednesday. I had one last week. I'll have one this week, too. And <laughs> I ate way too much food. Oh, you know what? I wanted to invite you all to something. On um, on Monday, December 5th, I am co-chairing a big black tie gala. It's the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. It's the Choose Life Awards presentation. It's at the Lighthouse at Chelsea Pier. If you know anything about any place worth knowing, you know the Lighthouse is that spot. It's on Chelsea Pier. I'm one of the co-chairs, along with Kenneth Cole and also Deborah Dingle, who's the um, with the General Motors Foundation. A whole bunch of, I mean, this is like a really swanky thing. A benefactor table, $25,000. A sponsor table, ten thousand dollars. Cheapest ticket in the house is five hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow. you know, I've got it for. I've got four tickets for four sophisticates. If you guys want to comb the phones for four four sophisticates, and you can bring one of your sophisticated friends with you. Snobby Marianne, this is your type of event. <laughs> this is for Monday, though. We're not going to be sitting together or anything like that. It's not. I don't, I don't even think I have a seat. I don't know what I'm doing that particular night as a co-chair. You know, I know what I've done all along. You know, help to plan the joint. That night, though, you know. You'd be at the main table. Or something, yeah. This is not, you know, I'm inviting you to sit and we hang out and how you doing it up. It's not that kind of a function. You know, leave the how you doing where back there. Put that where yeah, this is a sophisticated pinky in the air. That's right. <laughs> and Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Not shots of brown juice. My Aunt Marilyn, right? So we pull out the brown juice. <laughs> we pull out the brown juice at Thanksgiving. Aunt Marilyn says, what is that? <laughs> I looked at my brother and looked at my father. It was a real sophisticated bottle. We had a decanter with no writing on it, nothing like that. You know, the writing is on the coffin type thing that it comes in. I forgot which kind of, whatever it is, it comes in a coffin with the satin and the engraved and, you know, like a lock and key type thing, you know. And, you know, you leave it around too long. You're like, well, what the hell is more special than, than, than being together? Like, how much more special does life have to get? Why are we always saving liquor? Why do you save liquor? What are you waiting for? <laughs> So I said, I'm opening it now. She says, what is that? I looked at my brother and looked at my father and I, I looked at Aunt Marilyn and I said, brown juice. <laughs> <laughs> and so my, fa- my, my brother looked at me like, oh, I can't believe you just said that. Like it was this horrible thing. I poured him a glass and gave him the first glass just to be sure he was in on it. My father's standing there. You know, he didn't have any. He wants to see all of our reactions to the brown juice afterwards. I held my own. <laughs> anyway, um, once you get those four sophisticates lined up, I would love to um, talk to them. Okay. Yeah. It, they have to be available for cocktails at 630. The dinner and awards are at 730. They dress sophisticated. One person winning three tickets? No, no. Four different people winning four different tickets, but each person's allowed to bring somebody. So it's eight guests altogether. Okay. Okay. And remember, these are $500 tickets I'm giving away because it's the cheapest ticket in the house. (laughs) We need four sophisticates. Did you see this? You pay all this money for a damn condo and all of a sudden you can't walk out on your balcony because it might drop to the ground level. (laughs) Please. Yeah, well, in Miami, there's this place called the um, Sete. S-E-T-A-I. Am I saying that right? Anyway, they say that it is Miami's most luxurious new hotel and condo complex. Everybody's, you know, had parties there and whatnot from Puffy and whatnot. There's a glitch, though. According to the newspaper, it says the apartments, oh, they range from $1.2 $1.2 million to $25 million. They feature large balconies. And some of these balconies have jacuzzis. <clears throat> Who's, what's all doing? This is an arts form. Where is What's the number? <laughs> I mean, what does it start with? Oh, it's the number from here, from the station. Well, why, why are they so lazy? <laughs> why don't they just walk around here to the studio? 
Art is not in the... It, maybe he's in the bathroom. Suddenly, the residents have received notices that they can't set not even one foot to take a breath of fresh air from the ocean breeze because it might not be safe and the balconies might collapse. A spokesperson for the condo complex says um, they blame it on Hurricane Katrina. I mean, sorry, Hurricane uh, Wilma. So the doors have all been secured closed. Can you imagine that? All that money. I've got to tell you, I probably caught about 18 solid episodes of Good Times this weekend. 18, I'm talking about uninterrupted, like sitting and watching, mm. you know. And I was taking it for granted, like I'm sick of the song. I don't want to hear that damn song <laughs> for the next 25 years. <laughs> now it comes on, we know, every night at 10 o'clock on TV land. Let's see. UPN 9 News. Good times. UPN 9 News. Good times. For some people, that's a war in their head. We got the sophisticates all lined up. Valerie's on line one. Let's talk to her. Hey, Val, you're 44 and you're an accountant. Yes. And you can bring your sister who's single. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. This is great. All right. Yeah. So I'll see you Monday night. Hold on a moment, okay? Okay. Remember, it's black tie. Okay. Great. All right. Hold on. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Shaylin, I've got all the information here. You got to make a little contest grade so that she can come up and get her passes sometime this week. Line two is Stacy. She's a teacher from Westbury. She's mm -hmm. going to bring no. her girl. Oh, no, no Stacy. Stacy hung up. Mm -hmm. Oh, so far we only have one sophisticate, mm -hmm. Valerie. She's screening them one at okay. a time. Okay. Did you hear about Rod Stewart's daughter, Kimberly Stewart? She is such a skanky PWT looking woman. She just is just Art's friend. What's <laughs> can she? <laughs> Art calling himself. Art, exactly. <laughs> trying to sound important. <laughs> I guess that's his way of being a part of the break, even though he's not in here. You want to answer that, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kimberly Stewart, who's Paris Hilton's new best friend, is 26 years old. This is Rod Stewart's daughter. She's really disgusting looking, just real skanky. You wouldn't do her with your enemies private. <laughs> She's disgusting looking. <laughs> Ugh. She looks like she has dirty bottoms of her feet. And she doesn't wash her hands after she goes to the bathroom. And she will definitely go in your refrigerator without washing her hands. So she's um, engaged to this guy, Talon Torrier. Torriero. Do you watch Laguna Beach? I don't watch that show. He's only 19, though. They've known each other for two months. Be quiet. Just stay with me on this one. Be quiet. I know. I know. I know. Shh, 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 shh. Two-month-old couple. They've only been dating for two months. And they have announced their engagement. She's wearing a five-carat Neil Lane diamond ring. Wow. Wow. But not wow. everyone believes that they're in love. This is what, you know, one of the haters says. It's obviously just a cry for attention. I think she's taking a lesson from her best friend, Paris Hilton, who knows how to put an engagement ring on and take it off to get press. Let's not pay attention to Kimberly Stewart. All right, starting now. <clears throat> Ray Benzino is behind in his um, taxes. They say in, in the uh, Boston Globe, $1.5 million. It seems like a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money in the scheme of his thing. <clears throat> Between 2000 and, what did they say, 1999, 2001, he didn't pay his taxes. They said they've been following him and investigating and right, right behind his back. The feds mentioned something about, you know, investigating for murder and everything. So, you know, that means he's as clean as a whistle. If the only thing they could come up with is that he owes a few bucks for taxes, big damn deal. Could be worse. Do you guys follow this comedian, uh, this little kid, 15 years old, little JJ? Maybe your kids follow him? He's got a development deal with Nickelodeon for Nick Movies. Plus, he's got a green light for a pilot. And little JJ is turning up the heat for 2006. He's currently appearing on Nickelodeon on Friday nights. He hosts Friday Night Slime Time. Hmm. He's also in yours, mine, and ours. 
That was number two at the box office this weekend. Dennis Quaid. Is that the same I Love Lucy, um, yours, mine, and ours? I mean, is that the same concept, you know? Comes on black and white on TV sometimes. No? She married the father of my three sons. They had like a dozen kids together. Oh, such a movie. Let's go to line number three. Craig is on. Mortgage banker. You're going to bring your wife. Beautiful, Craig. Hello? Yeah, Yeah, we're going to put you on hold and take all your information. I'll see you Monday night. Oh, great. Yeah, uh, that would be Monday the uh, the 3rd. The the 5th. Monday the 5th. Oh, beautiful. Okay? That sounds great. All right, I'll see you there. And let's go to line number four. Deborah's there. She's 45. She stays at home and she needs to get out. She doesn't have a job. Hello. Hi, Deb. Yeah. All right, so, Deborah, are you with us? Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to see you Monday night. Okay. We're going to go to the lighthouse. It's going to be sophisticated. You can bring somebody with you. Who are you going to bring? I'll bring someone. I'll find someone. Well, you can bring that son of yours if you'd like. You see, he's 28. No, I don't think I should bring him. Yeah. Can't have as much fun. too boring. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, uh, you know, I'll see you on Monday night. I need one more person to win. So you're going to send me my ticket? No, you have to come get him. You don't work. You already said Okay, so where do I go? Uh, We're going to tell you the information behind the scenes, okay? Okay. All right, Deb, hold on. (laughs) I didn't mean it like that. Yes, you did. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right, hold on, you guys. I got some. I got so many other treats and tidbits to share with you. <sighs> Kathy Griffin is still dealing with her ex-husband. I suspect him to be coming out of the closet any day now. Ow. Don't take any offense to that, Kathy. But you've always been like a real hag. And I just can't imagine that you actually met a straight man virtually off the request line. If you were a DJ, Kathy, you would have met your husband off the request line. This is how they met. So she's taken one of those Los Angeles to New York. I like Kathy Griffin, by the way, a lot. And I've met her husband, Matt. They seem like a nice couple. But truth be told, she's on the red carpet one time, right? And I'm interviewing her. I'm talking with her. And her husband's holding her handbag like such a dutiful husband that I couldn't help but wonder. Ow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then you couple that. I mean, I'm telling you, he was holding this bag like a champ. And now you've seen him on the (laughs) D-list show. But what I saw was he was holding the bag like a champ, A. B, she's always been. Can you say fag hag on the radio? Uh, well, that's, well, that's that's what she's always been. Take no offense. So she's on the, one of these cross-country flights, Kathy Griffin is. And the woman who she's sitting next to in first class says, I want to introduce you to either my brother, my son, my cousin, whatever. You know, one of those type of hookups. Kathy exchanges numbers with the woman. Next thing you know, meets yeah. Matt and they get married. I mean, I look, I understand you meet people all kind of ways, but that's as bad as Denise Williams going on a limb date. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This damn Vaughn Harper comes in today and says, oh, Wendy, I heard you talking about, uh, uh, and I start going, doing my arms like a windmill, like, come on, first name is, you know, uh, we all have it up here. You know what? Because... When you have a mic break, you only have a certain amount of time to get your thought out. And sometimes your head is so full of stuff that, uh, is a full conversation. He said, uh, and I said, Denise Williams, I finished a sentence for him because, you know, we're connected. And I I understand the confusion in his head because I have it in mind. Uh, uh, uh. And then then I said, Denise Williams? He said, yes. I said, when she was, uh, I said, on Eliminate. He said, yes. I finished the whole conversation that me and Vaughn had. <laughs> he says, do you have a tape of you talking about that? I said, no, Vaughn. Hey, look, Hollywood, and you know we have a tape. Don't give Vaughn a tape of that. <laughs> All right. He said he wanted to send it to Denise. I said, for what? I don't think that I was talking about it in the most flattering of light. I was just saying, you know, she's still a very talented, <clears throat> seemingly youthful woman can sing her behind off. I just thought it was a bad move for her to be on some damn eliminate like some desperate broad in New York City. I know what you're saying, and she very well might be, but why does she have to be on eliminate? 
That's like Kathy Griffin meeting her husband from the the person in the seat next to her on the plane. And line number two is Tanya. She's a Marine Reserve. She wants to take her husband. It's seven. It's seven. Line seven. Tanya? Tanya? Yes? Okay, you're going. You and your husband. So I'll see you, and I'll see okay. Valerie, and I'm going to see Craig, Craig and I'm going to see Deborah. Okay. Okay, terrific. Now, here's the information, and you just make out a grid and just tell yeah. them where to go. The, the tickets are in-house. They can start picking them up in five minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. As soon as you finish with the information, if you want to tell them, you know, during show hours. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Great. It's going to be a really nice black tie function. <clears throat> Saturday, I'm going to be over at the uh, Manhattan Center uh, for the Gay Men's Health Crisis. You know, the, the, the annual dance-a-thon to raise money and awareness. HIV AIDS, hello. Killing, still killing. And we're still dancing. Beverly Bond, the legendary DJ, she's doing the music along with Tony Touch and, you know, some others. It's going to be a real swing in time. So, you know, 24 hours is a long time. I can give you the hours that I'll be there. I'll be there on Saturday at the Manhattan Center. Um, just hosting, you know, twirling and, you know, saying, how you doing? <clears throat> Between 7 and 9 p.m. So if you're going to be around on Saturday, if you're planning on going over to Manhattan Center for the annual AIDS uh, dance then I'll see you uh, between 7 and 9. Did you hear about this story? I'll tell you what. I know peanut allergies are really, really bad. <clears throat> and when people have them, something terrible can happen. Like you can die. A 15-year-old girl with a peanut allergy died after kissing her boyfriend. He had just eaten a peanut butter snack. That's what the hospital official said. This happened earlier today. Earlier today? Whoa. She was fine for Thanksgiving and won't see Christmas. Her name is Christina DeForge, and she died in the Quebec hospital. Oh, this is just being reported today. She actually died last week. She missed Thanksgiving. She died on Wednesday. The doctors were unable to treat her allergic reaction to the kiss. The previous weekend. She lived 155 miles north of Quebec City, and she was almost immediately given a shot of adrenaline, the standard tool for treating, you know, these peanut allergies. An autopsy was being performed. An allergist was called in, and everybody's declined to comment on the case. The symptoms of a peanut butter um, allergy attack include hives, plunging blood pressure, swelling of the face and throat. And, you know, when the, the throat swells up, it blocks your air. You know, yeah, cuts off your air and you suffocate. Peanut allergies, they say, have been on the rise in recent decades. The reason remains unclear, but one study found that baby creams, lotions, and many other things with peanut oils may cause children to develop... To do, excuse me, to develop allergies later in life. They say about 1.5 million Americans are severely allergic to even the smallest trace of peanuts and peanut allergies. That accounts for, they say, something like 50 to 100 deaths in the United States per year. That's a great way. You put a peanut in the middle of that meatloaf that you make him after you discover all them cell phone bills. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs thinking about how to kill somebody. <laughs> Our intern, Queen of the Intern Zoe, you know, she, she never said anything to me until one day I was looking for her. And I was, you know, very upset. You know, where, where, oh, where were you? You're always so on point. We were having a disaster going. The, where were you? And she said, Miss Wendy, you were eating peanuts. I said, yeah, and? She said, I'm severely allergic. So I don't eat them anymore. On days that's always here. <laughs> Why should we deny ourselves the delicious taste of peanuts any other time? <laughs> they are fabulous. <clears throat> Dear Wendy, I need some career advice. I've been working at my job as a temp for seven and a half months. I've spoken with my supervisor about a permanent position. He has re uh, recommended for me 
the position. However, it seems like I'm being jerked around. Almost like he's not sure what he wants to do. Wendy, I do my job well, and all of my work is done by the end of the day. I need some certainty from my job. I had to excuse myself from the last meeting that we had during the summer regarding the matter because the BS was irritating me. But this time, I want to go on and go in there and have a plan. Please tell me if this is too much. I plan to get a written letter from my current manager and some of the brokers I work for. I really like my job. What should I do? P.S. I also plan on putting on my power suit and pulling my hair back in a tight bun and going up in there with my resume and my references and hopefully he'll be impressed. Sounds like she's doing everything correctly. Oh, there's always that one last component. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? It sounds like you're doing everything correctly. I wish you hadn't walked out of the first meeting. Because that just says angry black woman. <laughs> you know? And did you walk out with your chair? Look, because like, you could just walk out of a meeting or you can walk out like this. <laughs> See, that's where the chair spins across the room and hits the wall behind you. <laughs> Grabbing all your paperwork all empty like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, everything sounds um, like it's like, like you're, you know, you're doing the right thing. Is anything certain anymore? I mean, even after you get this job, what kind of certainty do you have? Regis Philbin. Boy, the older he gets, the more job he gets, huh? He's got this New Year's Eve on Fox. He's signed on. I think I was reading like $30 million in new Regis Philbin deals. The man is 74 years old. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Did anybody see Mariah Carey sing at, at the Thanksgiving game? I saw Tony Braxton. I thought she could have judged it up a bit. I didn't see Mariah. I saw Tony. And when I saw Tony... I was like, oh. well, okay. Mariah had a lot of dancers. It was like really. Even if Tony didn't have all the dancers and stuff, I mean, she had on jeans and a crew neck sweater. And I just thought that, you know, for a woman trying to stage a comeback, you know, it's not Tony who's already here, already established. I mean, every day is a hustle, especially when, you know, you've gone so long without having a CD out. I just, she sounded wonderful, though. And she looked beautiful. She always looks beautiful. You can, Listen, Tony Braxton can't look bad. Big hair, little hair, short hair. You know, it, it, she can't look bad. But I just thought she would have looked more glamorous is what, I, what I'm trying to say. I was telling everybody earlier, listen. Knott's Landing is having a Knott's Landing reunion. Are you there? See, I'm there. December 2nd. It's Friday night at 9 o'clock. Forgo the disco nap. You know, come home from work, watch Knott's Landing, and then go out. I am. Nine o'clock, CBS. It's Friday night. All the players are part of the game still. Lisa Blackman. Joan Van Ark. Remember these people? You turned it back in the day. What? Wisteria Lane is Knott's Landing. Nicolette Sheridan. Remember Halle Berry? She was Debbie Porter. Remember she was having a, the affair with the older man, and she broke his heart. Mm. She had a minor role. That was back in 1991. Alec Baldwin. He played Joshua Rush. Yeah. Donna Mills. The best eye job in the industry. She always has good eye makeup on. Ugh. And Kevin Dobson has always been good looking to me. I don't care. He's oh, he's 61 years old and can still get it. Joan Van Ark looks so crazy scary. Her face is pulled almost as tight as Joan Rivers. She's 62, though. I have to tell you something. Between all the hair that she puts in her eyes, like Goldie Hawn does, you know, that's another, you know, trick to the, to the you know, getting older trade. You put all your hair in your eyes, with those bangs, you know. Anyway, they're all going to be there. Even Julie Harris is still alive. She's 79. She played Val's mother. Remember her? Nosy Southern broad. Friday at 9 o'clock. I am so there. Please. That's worth having a go-to person. I think I would have called my friend my friend Lisa. And talk on the phone and watch Knott's Landing.
We have to take a break. <clears throat> I need that tickets. Yeah, when we come back from the break, I'm going to give um, more information. I've got uh, a plethora <laughs> of telephone numbers to give you. The heat in, in Montclair and, you know, places where you can get tickets. Plus, of course, the Dons and Divas hotline here in the office and the website. And then, in addition to all that, I'm going to be giving away tickets um, after the break. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more of the Wendy Williams Experience bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, what's up? This is your boy Trey Sons, baby. You listen to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Cheers. You forgot my music. <laughs> oh. Just a little comeback bonus hour music. I don't know why the hell it is. I brought this in for my truck today. I always save a place for, you know, like 12-inch singles. Which actually for, a, oh. you know, a, a CD, it's a 4-inch single or whatever, but... This right here, I didn't even listen to the words. I just put it in on the instrumental. And I stopped, started it with my car for like five times. Just coming into work today. They said, yeah, we don't want no problems. We don't want no problems. I knew that there was a reason that I still like sour apple martinis and mojitos make me sick. Sour apple martini is only 91 calories. Mojitos are 206 calories. See, I'd rather have a couple of slices of a nice big Whopper Junior. Just, you know, two bites is like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, do you weigh your calories out like that? White wine is 110 calories. Well, I like the taste of an apple martini over white wine. So I'll drink that. 91 calories. Look, gin and tonic. Happy holidays. 105 calories. These are the instead ofs. Like, for instance, instead of having a Cosmo at the party, a Cosmo, which is like a martini, I guess a derivative of, it's shared in the same glass. 251 calories for a Cosmo, 91 calories for a sour apple martini. I gave up white Russians and mudslides a long time ago. I'd rather eat my calories than drink them away. And if I'm going to drink them away, then you pull me up to one of those frozen hot chocolates over there at Serendipity and I'm good. A white Russian, 338 calories. They say substitute, get a mudslide for 154. Still too many. Long Island iced tea, 323 calories. What the hell? And you're not even drinking anything creamy. For over 300 calories, I want some cream in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? They say instead of having the Long Island iced tea, they want you to drink a tequila sunrise. It's like a Long Island iced tea, only 114 calories. Margarita, look at this. 338 calories. They say substitute and have a mojito for 206. Oh, those are the bomb. Mmm, they are. Tom Collins. <laughs> How old is your average Tom Collins drinker? 83? <laughs> do, people, do people drink Tom Collins like that? Well, as opposed to having a Tom Collins for 208 calories, you can have something similar, which is a gin and tonic for 105. How old is the average gin and tonic drinker? <laughs> 73. Here, th look, here's three clues that you're drinking a, a drink that's high in calories. Number one, you're seeing double. They say sometimes drinks are twice the size they used to be. A 16-ounce margarita, for example, is packing 680 calories, as much as three beef tacos. <laughs> See, I'd rather have the food. You know? You know? <laughs> I'd rather have the food that I would eventually end up eating anyway after the get right. <laughs> Look, here's another clue that your drink is high in calories. It has a lot of liquor. They say, yes, it tastes good. Excuse me, liqueur. But liqueur is like 30% sugar. Mm -hmm. Also, if the main ingredient is a sour mix, that means you're drinking a high-calorie drink. They say, it was a whopping 27 calories an ounce without the liquor. Wow. A 
Don's and Divas. I'm going to be drinking champagne and brown juice. I'm not even going to drink any martinis. I'm not even going to try to ask anybody to mix or get anything together. Nope. Champagne and brown juice. From the bottle? Yeah. Both things I can have right there in front of me. Champagne here. Brown juice there. That's it. That's it. I don't want water. I don't want Diet Coke. I don't know. Champagne and brown juice. That's it. And a little finger food. I'm going to sleep all day next day. What is the next day? <laughs> Friday. No, we're working. Hello? We're working, Goose. And you're going to have champagne and brown juice. And we're working. I work every every year after Dons and Divas. I work because I like to come oh, yeah, back right, right. and report yeah, what happened. Day. You good like that? Yeah. yeah. We get the next day like Yeah. Like, like, like it was nothing. Cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, Goose, <laughs> you'll be here too. What's your secret? <laughs> I don't Listen, know. It's the gets, it gets, yeah, the listeners... <laughs> As my friend Star says, the listener will not be denied. Star is going to be at the Dons and Divas too. Star, Star, get at my get at my people or something like that. Shout out to Star and Buckwild Morning Show, and shout out to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Look, I don't know for what. I just know that I, you know, I like both of you dudes. Hey, Star, I want you at my Dons and Divas. You're always talking about you're looking for, you know, where does where the uh, sophisticated people party, and I know you like to have a nice belt of whatever. Come sit next to me, Star. Help me man the champagne and the brown juice. I know you're not one for cutting a rug. Me neither. You know what I mean? <laughs> me neither. Anyway, um, the Dons and Divas this year, it's called Question Mark Entertainment Face Down Production Present... Uh, excuse me. Question Mark Entertainment, Face Down Production, Demetrio Furs, and Martel X and O present the Wendy Williams Dons and Divas Extravaganza 2005. Oh my gosh. They're not letting people know until 10 days before exactly where it is. There's going to be a special telephone number on your tickets when you buy your tickets and stuff. It's not going to say exactly where it is. I mean, it might leak in the street and stuff, but you want to be sure that where you're going is where it is. So you're going to call this number and we're, we're going to give you the telephone number as we get closer to the date. And then you call the number and it's going to say, you know, how you doing or hello or whatever. The Dons and Divas <laughs> is and then give you the name of the place. Ray Zach, you know, the hair people, they're doing a contest at the Dons and Divas. $500 a piece for the best dress. This is the sixth Dons and Divas extravaganza. They have been fabulous parties all six times. Just wonderful. I always have some, and this year's theme, the black party. Oh, you get yourself with something black. You know what I'm saying? Put it on. It's going to be wonderful. A shout out to the white people. Do not, don't you dare think that this is just a black thing. <clears throat> Absolutely not. It's an everybody thing. Gay, straight, black, white, young, old. Accent on the young, because if you're a little bit older, then please have it on and popping in your mannerisms and whatnot. This is not an old people party. Oh, gosh. When I, oh, that sounds terrible. That's not what I mean. 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 Wait, let me regroup. Wow. 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 What I mean is... It's for, if you're going to be older, the young at heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can tell you where to get tickets really quick. Call Ron at Hillside Auto Spa in Queens. 718-5500. And in Harlem, you know the spot where everybody gets their bootleg, um, <laughs> I can't even say bootleg because you know what, it's the real deal. Shout out to Pop. Pop is holding it down at Black Star Music. You get your CDs and DVDs, but you can also get Don's and Divas passes in Harlem at, at Black Star. 212-234-6244. Let's hit line, uh, line. Let's go to the phone and see uh, who's all winning. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. So I'm giving away my Dons and Divas passes right now. 
You are? Yes. What's your name? Turn your radio I, down, though. I'm sorry. My That's name right. is Anita. Anita? Yes. Hey, Anita. Hi, how are you? Good. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from um, New Jersey. Okay. What do you do um, for a living? I'm a delivery solution manager with IBM. Oh, what, now, what do you do? What does that mean, delivery solution? Well, I'm kind of like an opportunity. I work on the sales solution and opportunities when IBM has certain deals coming down the pipe. Oh, deals. And once we engage the customer, I work the on pipe. the solution and the deal. Engage solution. Keywords. Are you bringing your man? No, I'm not bringing a man. I'm bringing a lady friend. Lady friend. That's the buzzword. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you you say all right. I'm I'm, I'm kind of discreet. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll see you at the party. You'll see me at the party. Thank yes. You very much. All right. I, I appreciate you inviting me. Oh, you're very well. Listen, um, you sound a little in the doldrums right now. What are you still at work? Yeah, I'm at work. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of being a little discreet. In that tight suit, right? Yes, in the tight suit. Yeah. You know, I call it the monkey suit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, look, put on something beautiful in black, and I'll see you on December 22nd at a very discreet location in Manhattan. I Ma appreciate Mary J. Blige is hosting. Goodness only knows the celebrities that we're going to attract. I mean, they, celebrities always come out. Okay. Shout, shout out to Keisha Cole and Trey and, you know, whatnot. Okay. All right. Uh, keep your radio down, though, and hold on a moment. Shaylin's going to give you... Shaylin, I don't know what I did with the contest sheet. Can you make something up? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's so much going on today. Turn the radio down. I will. I'm yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, you hold on a moment, Anita. Thank you. I'll see you at the party. Thank you, Wendy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See, that's the one. You get a couple of drinks in her. She comes she the wild one. You say? Did you hear how? Mm. Thank you. This hour is brought to you by Nissan here at the radio station. If you were somebody that you know, this is everybody's business. This domestic violence has got to stop. Yeah, well, it's got to stop. If you were somebody that you know is being abused, you know, you're not alone. And there's a telephone number that can offer you shelter, support, just a conversation. Sometimes that helps. It's free and it's confidential. It's 1-800-621-HOPE. Shout out to Kevin Lyles. Shout out to Azim, Re uh, Azim Rashid. Shout out, shout out to Kevin Holiday over at Atlantic Records. Doing big things. Oh. The sad music lingered. No, something. no, the sad music lingered a little too long. <laughs> I thought you meant that for them. No, 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 no not, not to them. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, dear Wendy. Oh, by the way, let me give you the, the telephone number. Um, I'm sorry for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. For general ticket information, you can leave a message if you would like to purchase tickets. One of the girls will get back to you. Um, you know, you let them know whether you want VIP tickets, regular tickets. Do you want, you know, the premium? You know, what, what is it that you want? This party is, um, is you know, a lot of giving away going on. But there are um, a limited amount of tickets available for purchase. And so we're getting them out there to you. We're not having you call like Ticketmaster and all like that because they, they do like a $25,000 surcharge for, you know, $10 tickets. It's scandalous. Scandalous. You can go to the website and email. Don't forget to include your telephone number and or your email address so the girls can email you back and tell you where to get your tickets. If you give me a moment, you'll be able to go on to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, and see names and telephone numbers of where to pick up Dons and Divas tickets. But for right now, here's the email. Dons and Divas 2005 at yahoo.com. Or you can call 212 447 5199. The phone actually rings on my cocktail table. I don't have a desk. Now, I wanted a loungy area, so I can't say it rings at my desk, but it rings next to my couch on my cocktail table, which is like my desk. When I come in and do my paperwork and stuff, I put my feet up and I lay back and I lounge like the Queen of Sheba. And I take my meetings that way and everything. Sometimes it's cold. I pull a comforter out. <laughs> Put that over on me. <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. I decided I didn't want to be all stiff with the desk. You know what I'm saying? Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, they you know did the office all over again. Stephanie's busy ordering all these desks and stuff. And I decided, you know what? As long as the office is being done again... I don't want to sit at a desk. I'm not a pencil pusher. Like, I don't want to sit at a desk. What do I know for wanting a compute, a compute damn dur? What? 
give me my remote <laughs> and my end table and a cocktail table in front and a little phone extension right next to me and a couch that nobody else can sit on. I miss Dave, but I don't miss the funky spunk. He used to splash all around our old office. <laughs> Everything you got to wonder, you know, whose ass was on that. So now, you know, there's no Dave. Art's a little bit more sophisticated. You know, he's not up to those reindeer games. We accuse him of a lot of stuff, but he doesn't do that. Hollywood, I... <laughs> yes, you would. Not that you know him. Well, not in the new office. <laughs> And Goose, Goose wouldn't do that. No, no, yeah, certainly not. You're the ones you least expect. Exactly. <laughs> he said, certainly not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. Anyway, I lay back on my couch, <laughs> and I get the show ready, and I take meetings, and I'm laid out on the couch. <laughs> and nobody else can sit on the couch. It's my couch. <laughs> so this, this phone that you dial for Dons and Divas rings right on my cocktail table right next to my couch. <laughs> 212-447-5199. 212-447-5199. That's that. It's, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and I got to get home tonight. You know what's coming on channel 30? Um, the TV land, the same channel that had the Good Times Marathon. Then that's when we learned that being Farrah, four av hours, of just seven hours, something like that, of chasing Farrah. I got to get in at least three of those tonight after growing up Gotti. I'm sorry. That's what I do on Mondays. And you know what? I do go through a conflict because Girlfriends is my show. Mm -hmm. And it comes on at 9 o'clock. But so does the new episode of Growing Up Gotti. So I, I'm like back and forth. I get all confused. Wendy, my husband and I have been married for 12 years and I recently received... I would love to take more of your telephone calls, but I swear I think people are going to be calling asking about the same Dons and Divas passes or Artie's passes. So I'm scared to pick up the... Or the, um, the sophisticated... Black tie thing. I'm scared to pick up the phone. All right, let's take a chance. Why not? Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, lovely to have you here. Okay, it's Carlene. I wanted to win the Thousand and Zebra. I think I just missed it. Oh. Yeah, you did, Carlene. Oh. Sorry about that. All right, then. All right, take care. Thank bye bye. You. Bye. S see you no more of that. Why not? Try one more time. Okay. They've been married for 12 years. This is a good one. She received a phone call. No, oh, hello? Yes, hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Oh, hi, Wendy. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. I was hoping you were giving away tickets to your Dons and Divas. <laughs> <laughs> we already gave them away, but call back tomorrow. Oh, I'll try. I love you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, you too. Bye. No more of that, Goose. Now, listen to this. Please don't run me out of here. My husband and I have been married for 12 years, and I recently received a call from a woman informing me that he is the father of her baby. When I confronted my husband, he admitted to sleeping with the woman, but stated that he does not believe he's the father because she was also sleeping with other men at the same time. I feel strongly about infidelity, and my husband has begged me for forgiveness for his stupid mistake. My question to you is, how can I begin to heal not knowing whether or not this baby is his. The baby supposedly isn't due until May. Well, you know what you... Hey, Zoe. Hey. I was just talking about you and the peanuts. I heard you at work. Look, I'm sorry, Zoe. We'll talk in the office. I've okay. get, got to get to this woman. There is no healing until May. There is no... Now you know what it is? Plotting. Calculating. Everything you do is a calculated move. You have sex with him when you want to. Not when he wants to. And you start taking some of that money out of you all's joint account. And you start siphoning it underneath that big oak tree in your backyard. Because when the divorce goes down, you are going to be the meanest, most ruthless bitch with every right. You got until May to get your act together. And guess what? If he proves that he is not the father, then it's up to you to decide whether you can deal with infidelity. Because then it's just plain old infidelity. And, and perhaps you can deal with it. Infidelity... Depending, and there's a lot of dependings, is not necessarily the end of a relationship. I've been through it. I, I understand and so on and so forth. But I will say this to you. If you decide to stay with him and that baby is not his, everything you've poached, you keep. Everything you've squandered, stolen, let's call it what it is. Everything you've stolen from him between now and May you keep and you better not feel remorse and you better not do something all syrupy like 
take both of you on a vacation. Oh, honey, I got some extra money. No, don't share nothing with him. Because at the end of the day, he still cheated. And for that, he must pay. Don't splash out on heavy Christmas gift for him. You get him the bare minimum. Draw car from CVS. <laughs> you let him get you gifts. In the meantime, between now and May, what you do is you wring your hands and rock. From now until May, I don't care. Learn to multitask. This is about plotting. Nothing soft and pink. You fake soft and pink to him to get what you need. Whatever that is. You won't know until uh, after the baby is born. So, and, and I think that he's lying about she's sleeping with a bunch of other people at the same time. He doesn't know all that. You know what I'm saying? He's married. A, a smart jump off. A shout out to all the jump offs. If I was somebody's jump off, it'd be none of your business, married man. Who the hell I'm sleeping with and what the hell I'm doing. As long as while you're with me, you feel like the only man. That's all that's important. What? I owe you nothing. And I'm keeping this baby. Now what? Oh, gosh. Oh, my, you just God. Oh my God. It's time for me to go home. It's time to go home. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Did you pack um, the best of Thanksgiving show in my bag? Yeah, I gave it to you earlier. Okay. I didn't hear it, the whole thing. I, <laughs> you didn't listen uh, on Thanksgiving Day? I was in and out. I told you. Aunt Marilyn was over. <laughs> Look. I love you all for listening. It's the bonus hour. It's the best. Vaughn Harper's up next with The Quiet Storm <laughs> on 107.5 WBLS. Bye. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh, man. And WBLS music starts.